afternoon, the Pittsburgh Panthers of the Big East, looking for their first win, challenge the unbeaten Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Memorial Stadium on a Saturday afternoon as you look down at another packed house. And here come the Cornhuskers, touching the horseshoe for good luck, and they will pour out onto the field. A work in progress, but a defense that appears to be back. This defense scored three touchdowns a week ago against Wake Forest. And for the Panthers, Dwight Eisenhower was president of the United States the last time they played Lincoln. It's Nebraska and Pittsburgh coming up. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you with us. Normally when I come to Lincoln, folks say, we're going to win by how many? Now they're asking me, we're going to win it all. What about this Cornhusker team? Well, Brent, uh, Nebraska will win more games this year. They've got a favorable schedule, and they've got a defense that will make plays this year. Their front seven will remind you of the old Nebraska defenses. It's on offense. It's still a work in progress. There's really not a difference maker at wide receiver, offensive line, or running back. Really, the difference makers are freshmen. Pittsburgh has struggled. Lost to Ohio 0-2. What about the Panthers? It's the flip side for Pitt. Their difference makers are specialists. Tyler Palco, Greg Lee, and their secondary. The problem with Pittsburgh is their offense and the defensive line have been getting manhandled. That will be the challenge today for Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh's without Rashad Jennings, a running back, injured shoulders out. Jack, Coach Wanstead told us he's trying to inject some speed into this offense. And he hopes it becomes a difference maker as a youngster by the name of Larod uh, uh, Stevens Howling will get a lot of touches today. You'll be able to see him right off the top of the bat. Why? Because he's the smallest at 5'7 and only 165. Coach Wanstead says he's going to give him a lot of touches with the ball, and he says let's see if he holds up under big-time college football pressure. All right, Jack. Nebraska won the toss, and they defer to the second half. That means that Pittsburgh will go on offense to begin the game. Palco, who has thrown only one touchdown. Folks, that touchdown came on his opening series of the season against Notre Dame. Since then, four interceptions. Kevin Cosgrove, Gary, is the defensive coordinator working against him. And Kevin Cosgrove believes he has mismatches at defensive end, and his three linebackers make plays. He will not blitz a lot. He feels that the advantages are in his favor man-to-man. -man. Pittsburgh comes up in the power eye using Raymond Kirkley to open the game. A little more experience than the freshman Jack told you about. On first down, fires complete to Lee. And Lee is out of bounds. We expect them to go up on top and challenge that corner early and often on that side. They will go after Green repeatedly. Number 30, as you see, the backs and receivers for the Panthers. Greg Lee is out of Tampa. Number 86, 86. the Ameriprise lineups. There is the offensive line. Dale Williams steps in. He's a story. He replaces redshirt freshman Don Williams, who is not here because of an ankle injury. There is Lee already with one catch. They come back with Kirkley. And they work the right side of the defense, if you will. Not a surprise here. And Green came up from the corner. Here's the defensive line. Moore, who got back defensively on that first play. Smith, Adams, and Carricker up front. Linebackers, Bradley, McKeon, and another Rue here in Nebraska, the younger brother. And in that defensive backfield, keep an eye on number 30, Green, and two Grixby. Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator, wants to challenge these two corners repeatedly. These are professional coaches. They will go right after you repeatedly. Back after green side, but the ball bounced and it'll be third down. It's a little bit of Matt Cavanaugh's offense right there. That was backup tight end strong, number 14. A matchup to the outside. It was read well by Pelko, but Pelko fails to deliver a relatively easy throw. matches the offensive substitutions they make four changes up front trying to give them a little bit more speed here it gets an obvious passing down now go the left 
left-hander is back. His offensive line, he's hit on the release, and if they don't give him the spot, it'll be just short of the first down. That hit by Muhammad. Wally Muhammad is one of those specialists that comes into rush on third down on their nickel package. Nebraska only rushed three players this time. They played a lot of coverage behind it, kept everything in front of them, and a sure tackle, as you see. Muhammad does it cleanly and forces a three and out. So it is fourth down, and now Grixby goes in as the punt return man. They make a quick switch, and there was movement up front and if that's against Nebraska if they move first that's a first down and that was Tyler Palco as the blocking back that time and he shifted under center good spot to use that tried to draw him off sides and if you get him you get a free first down and it doesn't matter where you punt from the 50 or the 45. Randy Crystal the ref. Prior to the snap offside. We'll do it first Speaking down. Of, it's a five yard penalty first down. And last night, Dave Wanstad told us that he's going to have the whole package on special teams. You see Palco, he was in there as the blocking back. He shifts up, does a hard count, and draws them offsides very easily. Really surprised Nebraska wasn't in a defense safe because it was fourth and inches. First down in Nebraska territory, just across the 45-yard line. Power eye look for the Panthers. Here comes Kirkley. Nothing doing. And he is jumped by number 90, Adam Carricker. He had three sacks. Let's talk about what both teams need to do in this football game. They're ranked 95th and 99th in total offense. They have to find a run game, find a passing game, and win third down, or in the instance before, win fourth down. Keep the ball. That's what they have to do on offense. Negative yardage that time. The ball's brought back to the 48-yard line. Passing situation here for Palco. One running back. Two wide and double tied in. Palco straight back. Goes that sideline again and put it in the hands of Daryl Strong. His first catch of the season for a first and ten. The DB was turned around and they had licking their chops going after number 30. Remember an inexperienced cornerback over there. And it's going to be a flat and up by Daryl Strong this time and deep help by Ter Green. Should have known he had a safety behind him and no reason to sink in on that play. That time Kevin Cosgrove rolled the coverage to Green's side and Green still didn't handle it. Now remember, he was a running back a year ago. He is not used to this. First down and 10. Here's Kirkley Hall on the right side. And he is stopped. Number 34, Stuart Bradley, the Sam linebacker, who had a big game against Wake Forest. Eight tackles, two sacks, interception for a touchdown. He and Blake Tietke come in for that stop. Pittsburgh shifted to an overbalanced line that time and caught Nebraska outflanked and ran the ball perfectly. A successful play with a formation shift. Second down and seven. Search with Kirkley again, and the black shirts were right there and jumped on that play. Again, it is Carriker, number nine. Carriker just stood his man up that time, kind of overpowered that Pittsburgh offensive line, just straightened it out like a Nebraska bench press, just kept his hands out and just came down the line and made the tackle. That's what I'm talking about. Pittsburgh must win some of these one on one blocking things at the line of scrimmage to win the game. So here's the third down for Palco. Split the backs and he'll throw out of that formation. And he was under enormous pressure that time. Bo Rude, the Will linebacker, was in on the quarterback. If you've got a problem at cornerback, what you can do is blitz. That time, Rude and the safety both came. Palco did not have any chance but to get rid of that ball and avoid the sack, stay in field goal range and try to put three points on the board. Josh Cummings, he's perfect so far this season. He's hit all three. This would be a 42-yarder. He hit a 49-yarder in game one against Notre Dame. And he put the Ohio game into overtime with seven seconds left. 
Here Josh Cummings with Russell the punter down and they block it. He's now three for four. Nebraska football. Coming right up the middle. Looks like a good snap. Let's see if he handles it correctly. Leans it toward him. Perfect. Kicks the ball. And is just eaten up by the Nebraska defensive line. Zach Potter, number 98, being congratulated on the sideline for his blocked field goal. Callahan, of course, he's met Dave Wanstead before in the NFL. Callahan, an offensive special. Wanstead, a defensive specialist. And here on the first offensive play, the little eye back. Corey Ross comes through. Zach Taylor. J.C. transfer from the Butler Junior College in El Dorado, Kansas, checks in. Only one touchdown and three interceptions. Let's go back to that matchup of coaches, Gary. What do we expect from these two? You know, when you talk to both of the coaches, they're both comfortable with what they're seeing from the other side of the ball. They both feel like they have things that will work. They feel comfortable like they know the other guy. Clayton Seavers switches over to the right side of the formation. Ross, the eye back behind a pulling guard. Picks up a couple of yards. And uh, John Saunders, what's happening? And uh, Horse, keep an eye on that one for us, John, as uh, Rosser shifts back into the eye back spot. First down. Play fake. Taylor, the right hander, rolls and completes his first pass out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Our merit prize of financial backs and receivers for Nebraska. Corey Ross has been active. Franz Hardy played at Butler JC with Zach Taylor. He was his go to receiver behind this offensive line. And uh, they have been disappointed so far in the work of the tackles. Evo Aye and Fumato Thomas. Uh, they're expecting them to step up. And here is Ross, second down. And the defense will have to guess four down linemen, you can see, for the Panthers. Ross hole on the left side, first down, and he slams into Pittsburgh territory, down to the 44-yard line before J.J. Horn back to make the stop for the Panthers. This is the defensive front. McKillop, they've struggled with tackle. Smith and Tillman in there, and uh, Select. Linebackers, Horn, probably back to make the stop. H.B. Blades, their leading tackler. Thomas on the other side, the defensive back. The corners are very good. Revis and Josh Leigh. Morrison Phillips also good at safety, but they have been asked to make too many tackles as the front seven has not held the line. And now Nebraska on the move. And we're not seeing shades of a West Coast offense. We're seeing shades of a power attack here as the wide receiver coming around on the end around. That was lu uh, lucky. Up. Wasn't that lucky, lucky the uh, they freshman? Put him, they put Lucky over on the other side and uh, brought him off the wing on around look so he touches the ball for the first time here today all of these plays by Bill Callahan is scripted very carefully a lot of shifting and motioning early in the game it has really kept the pit defense off balance that play was actually there and playable you watch the tight ends shift quick motions a lot of things happening both tight ends going to one side and then usually a quick motion and a penalty flag through all that movement going on this is big 12 officiating crew here this is the same crew that worked that Saturday night game that John referred to in uh, Columbus. Prior to the snap, false start, number 85. He was covered up and he moved. Five yard penalty, it's still second down. Well, so you see Bill Callahan, who was the head coach of the Oakland Raiders, and on the other side, the former head coach of the Chicago Bears and the Miami Dolphins, Dave Wanstead. And Callahan now needs a big play. This is second down. They've got to go all the way to the 35 yard line of the Panthers here in the next two downs. Second down and 19. Two self inflicted wounds. Got him in reverse here. Draw play to get some of it back. Ross storms across the 50. And uh, you know, Gary asked Coach Callahan, uh, hey, did you study any Miami Dolphin tapes to get a read on Wanstead? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> we looked at some Dolphin film from the last few years. Uh, basically, Pittsburgh's defense is a, is a carbon copy of what the Dolphins uh, have done and what they did under Dave Wanstead. And so Callahan's second year 
seven and six overall, two and zero oh this season. As last year uh, was a bad one, but this is a work in transition. When you install the West Coast offense, it'll take three years for them to get some of the receivers and other positions plugged in. Here, Taylor. So this will be well short of the first down on third down. J.J. Horn being very active at that linebacking spot. At the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution. Deach University's General Scholarship Fund. Very conservative call there by Bill Callahan. Kept both tight ends in, only a three-man route, all to the same side of the field. Really no opportunity to pick up the first down. He wanted to play field position early in the game. It definitely looks like he's turning this game over to the defense yep. and the special teams. And he has an uh, excellent special team, much improved. Sam Cook bangs that punt and see if they can put the Panthers inside the 20. Fumble! They've got him down by the five yard line. So the Panthers lucky to pounce on that ball as their outstanding sophomore corner, Revis, put it down. And he's back all the way to the three yard line as Joey Robinson was back on top of him. So we've talked about the black shirts. Is the swagger back? We'll find out. Rod Stevens howling. So we return to kickoff 95 yards for a touchdown. And now the freshman Wiz will be in that backfield with Campbell in front of him and Palco the quarterback. So Dave wants to did not wait, did not give him real good field position. They're coming out from just inside that five yard line. He has thrown the freshman to the wolves and like Here he comes. Slipping with that speed. Elusive. Boy, that was a good looking run, and he was brought down at the 14 yard line. This was a fine eight yard run. And he has the speed, is what Wants Dave Wants that's looking for. He's right there, single back. You're not going to put him in to pass block. You're not going to put him in to block for the other guy. You're going to put him in to run. And actually, Stuart Bradley, number 34, if he doesn't trip him up there, the only guy left is Corey McKeon to stop that from going the whole way, and he wasn't going to catch him. Second and two. Again, for the first down. And this time, Green comes up to help the front. And there's McKeon again. Well, College Football ABC is brought to you by Shell. I like the fact that he's in the game. You can see a little different pace for Pittsburgh when he's in the game. But I think they really have to look at the total number of carries he's going to get in this game. They can't give him the ball 20 times. Timeout has been called. So we will take a break. Palco wants to talk about it with Coach Wanstead on the sideline. Dates back to 1962. By way of comparison, at Lambeau Field, where the Packers play, since 1960, they've had 335 consecutive sellout. But the folks ever so loyal here in uh, Lincoln, and the freshman trying to give the Panthers a lift, and has he ever? Running just shy of a first down, out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Tiki is there, and uh, Jack, this uh, freshman has given the Panthers a lift. He may be small, but he plays big. Let me take you back one year ago when the Rod Stevens howling was part of the J Greater Johnstown High School juggernaut. Broke all of the rushing records there. He's tiny, but you can see the way he cuts and he scats back and forth. He can be a weapon. I'm sure he's got the uh, Nebraska coach's attention upstairs and on the field. Palco going to lob one. Jump ball incomplete. Grixby had taken Lee and that coverage. And uh, uh, John, what about Oklahoma and UCLA? And may not have gone to class, but he uh, didn't forget how to block, huh, John? That was a devastating uh, touchdown clearing block by Adrian. A lot of folks surprised that UCLA was established as a favorite in that game. The freshman breaks free again as he nifty. The Cornhuskers with their hands full as the corner, Grixby, has to take him out of bounds, but it is another first and 10. That is 16 more yards now for Stevens Howley. Look at the tight end is right here for Pittsburgh, and here's the outside man in the line of scrimmage for Nebraska. That's an overload that wasn't really handled well for Nebraska, and that's why this play, look, McKeon switches out, but then the speed pops out. That one give again to Matt Cavanaugh. A change up in the formation was not a lined up right and properly by Nebraska. 
Rushed for 1,875 yards a year ago in high school. He scored 32 touchdowns. Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda, I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome you to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. We're at the top of the hour, and uh, you can see a few Pittsburgh jerseys down there in the crowd, folks, but not many. It basically is your your normal sea of red despite coming off a losing season. The cheerleaders here bringing some enthusiasm for those fans who were at the Cornhusker where we were last night and enjoying the game here. Second down. And the black shirts with their hands full against this nifty freshman runner. Three down lineman this time and Palco under pressure is sacked. Brought down as they flop character to the right side, bring him in, and he gets the sack. That's one of those outside rushers that Kevin Costco believes can win one on one. That time, Jay Moore was a defensive end, stood up to give the illusion of a 3 4, and then still had the stunning ability to come inside. But Carriker, a one on one type guy, can beat those offensive tackles. The left tackle is Charles Spencer with his hands full on the edge. Third down and 14 for the Panthers. The slide is to Paco's right. Spins and down at the 35. He had gotten off the hit by Wally Muhammad, but as he spun, down he went on the 35. The black shirts rise and hold as the Panthers' passing game stalls this attack. Nickel package, Wally Muhammad, number 55, comes in at one end, and Barry Turner, number 99, comes in at the other end. The pass rushing specialist into the game and another sack for Nebraska. Adam Grassil back to punt. One thing the Panthers have to be careful of is a block. Brixby is back. On a run, puts it down, a dangerous oh. grab by Grixby. The one of the things that the return men will try to do here is to come up and make the catch because you can get all kinds of wicked hops on this artificial turf and it is newly installed. There's 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Legal motion again by Nebraska getting ready to shift. It did not shift properly and, um, and flinch Martin just pass. enough. Ball start, number 88, offense. It's a five yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, Wanstead and Callahan have both been on Monday night games, and here are their Monday night coaching records. Wanstead with Chicago and Miami, seven and ten. Callahan with the Raiders, two and three. The Bill, of course, took the Raiders on to the Super Bowl, and they were beaten by Tampa Bay. Here comes Ross searching for daylight. Uh, Jack, this um, this turf is a brand new installation. And it's totally different, Brent. Gone is the high crown that Coach Tom Osborne wanted on this field. It's been reduced considerably, maybe because Bill Callahan wants to introduce that West Coast offense. He wants to speed it up as well. Yesterday, they've moved several tons of sand. You can't cut artificial turf. So if you want to make it speedy, well, then you just add the sand. That was interesting, Jack, after that, they watered that sand in the uh, field. Appears to be in great shape and Ross barging for a first down. Tough run by number four. Gary, what's your feeling that we were down on the field before the game? How do you like this uh, <laughs> surface here? I was wishing I could have played on that uh, nine years of playing on the old AstroTurf. It's a lot different feel. It slows the game down just a tad from the old AstroTurf, but it's a little quicker than the old than the, than the grass fields that we still see. You know, Corey Ross. He is one of those guys that is learning how to run this West Coast offense, too. Run, run, Whole run. different field, much more man blocking, has to stay with his blockers and run, read it a little bit more. Play fake. Gonna probe deep. Incomplete. So he overthrew number 83, Terrence Nunn. And area of coverage for the game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship, Bloomin' Onion One. The Outback uh, Steakhouse Airship specializes in college football and PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout the year. Don't blame that too much on Zach Taylor because what happened that time is none got jammed. Once he got hit, he could never really get his speed going again. And when Zach Taylor threw that ball, he didn't know that he had to start up and go all over again. 
There's a lot of confusion with Nebraska. They could not get the substitution pattern right. So a timeout has been called by Callahan's team. One of the things about the West Coast offense, it is complex. Timeout. They, they, sw they switch a lot of players, a lot of different formations, and right now they're struggling. And in practice, Callahan Adam, I watched practice. They went over formation after formation after formation, and he wants them to break that hole between 16 and 18 seconds so they can do all the shifting and motioning at the line of scrimmage. Dane Todd is the fullback. France Hardy, the wide out. J.B. Phillips, one of the tight ends, and there is Zach Taylor, number 13, the quarterback. Slot is off to his left. On second down, got it complete, and there's his J.C. buddy Hardy, who gave up a first down. Had a first down, and he dipped back, and it was defended by Mike Phillips, the strong safety. He's telling him right now, keep going, don't come back. Yeah. Tapped him on the helmet. Nice job here, though, by Hardy. Watch this ball is delivered right by the chin, catches it, thumbs together in his hands. Exactly the way you teach it, catches the ball. Then after that, he doesn't do anything you teach him. <laughs> Had the first down, just go duck. Know what the play is designed to give you, and then go and get it. Don't try to, this isn't community junior college anymore. These guys are going to tackle you on those type of plays. Hardy, Hardy, interestingly, is a junior college player, but he's a three-year player. He's going to have three more years at Nebraska, not two. Yep, big difference. He'd have had it. But it is second down and inches. So, in effect, you could argue that Nebraska in this passing attack uh, has the third down. Let me check myself on that as uh, they change the, uh, the down marker across the field just after the measurement. So, it is third down. And uh, inches here. Hardy goes over to the sideline, but the, but the confusion on this sideline is with the substitution patterns. And even Dane Todd, prior to that snap, was not too sure what they wanted to do. Well, this is the one in the huddle now as a quarterback. You just say, Nebraska, you're a Nebraska offensive lineman. We're going to pick this up. Kurt Mann, the center. They pound right straight ahead, and there's the young fullback. That is Cody Glenn, folks. He's the fullback of the future. He's out of Rusk, Texas, and he picks it up. He's got physique, the big-time running back. The backs of the future here are Glenn, 34, and Lucky, number 20. And in that situation, in short yardage, they laid him up at tailback, and he just powered his way that time. Both of them in the in the West Coast offense can play at different spots. Fullback and, and tail, tailback sometimes are interchangeable. Here is the pitch out wide to the eye back, and number 30 is back there at the eye back. Green, who started as a defensive corner just got his first carry at I back. How about that folks and uh, we check in with John Saunders. Corey Ross comes in and replaces Green pounds and a first down. As a, uh, helmet pulls free. Thomas the uh, Sam linebacker over to make the stop. That was sort of interesting for them to run a defensive back who's under enormous pressure yeah. from the Pittsburgh I don't, I don't know if he attack. has practice time to be able to do that. If you're learning to play corner, looks like there was a late on sportsman call in, the, in this. Foul on both teams, number 65 red, number nine white. The penalty's canceled. That's Greg Austin of the uh, offensive line and J.J. Horn, the linebacker. Getting, you know, uh, Brent, uh, that, that play, though, is a real speed play, and Green is one of the fastest Nebraska players. He's a 4-3-40 guy, so maybe that's his only play. That's all I can think of. Well, maybe they didn't want to trust uh, Marlon Lucky, the well, other he, eye back, the freshman of Phenom. He slipped once on a play that was open. First and 10. Ball at the Pittsburgh 32 yard line. And Ross is blowing up in the backfield. Number 50, Rashad Duncan in to make the stop. So uh, Green uh, doing a little two way action here today, Jack. Well, and it should be no surprise, Brent, when if the name sounds familiar, it was his cousin that made a lot of records back here. Amon Green. Old number 30 back in 95 through 97. So maybe it's in the genes. Maybe that's why Tier Green is able to scat the way he does when they hand him the ball on offense. Now he's from nearby Omaha Benson High School. 
Never played corner up in high school, but he did play safety. And he was a good one, we were told. Second down for Taylor, and the Nebraska offense can throw the swing. Ross out wide. Slips a tackle inside the 25 yard line. Third and short coming up. Tez Morris, the senior free safety with the stop. Well, Zach Taylor's running the offense exactly the way Bill Callahan wants him to do. Don't force the ball. He had a throw possibly downfield, but he also had Ross wide open for an easy pitch and catch. He took the easy throw and it paid off now for third and short. So for Bill Callahan. And the black shirts, a low scoring game shaping up here in Lincoln. Pittsburgh and Nebraska at the end of the first quarter are scoreless. To win for the third consecutive time as we open the season. Second quarter here, and this will be a third down and two. The freshman fullback back in that eye back look. Here comes Glenn again. Fumble, bobble, got it, cut back. Did he get the first down? He bobbled the ball, and that appeared to cost him the, uh, the first down. So, very, very even so far. But you said at the top of the broadcast, both teams looking for an offense and uh, haven't found one. No, and, and, and all the warning signs are still there. Uh, Pittsburgh has given up sacks, and Nebraska has not been able to run the ball consistently and still are making mistakes, self inflicted mistakes, and that's why both offenses are struggling. We will see what they can uh, do to try to keep this going right here. They'll come out now with a fourth down and one. Just like that play right there. That's a first down if they just make the handoff. Cody Glenn again barges, breaks a tackle, and is short of the 15 yard line. And you can hear the buzz in Lincoln. Folks like this freshman from Rust, Texas, as Rebus, the corner, makes the stop. You think these fans read their scouting reports on new freshmen and stuff? I mean, you can just pound it right up in the middle right there. You got a big running back, and he just makes those defensive backs and corners and linebackers pay the price in those plays. You know, the West Coast offense is a little bit of finesse, but you can't get caught up in playing finesse football. You have to pound it. All right, now we see that uh, Mike Stunts is in the game. He's a left-handed thrower. He was a quarterback once through an option. He keeps it that time coming around. And, and so they sent him in. He has been a safety and they have been uh, practicing that play, but they didn't uh, bring him on the end of round against Oklahoma when we were in here, Gary. He threw back to Eric Crouch and he put that game away against the Sooners four years ago. Yeah, that was a big play of the football game that Nebraska really had troubles moving the ball against the Oklahoma defense. That play right there was a designed pass. Problem was Pittsburgh was ready for it, and Brent, we might know why. Huh? Absolutely. We'll tell you that story here as uh, inside shuttle, and it is eaten up as uh, Corey Ross is hit by Chris McKillop. Now, let's go to that story. The offensive line coach, Dennis Wagner, was speaking at the Big Red Breakfast in <laughs> Omaha too yesterday. Many, too many pancakes. And for uh, one of the things he said was that to get ready for uh, stunts and some gadget plays. Well, folks, uh, the Pittsburgh uh, coaches, they can read, too, and the players, and they saw that. So I'm sure that they yelled number 16, number Absolutely. 16 immediately. And I'm sure also the coach Callahan was not too happy about uh, seeing one of his assistant coaches <laughs> quoted as giving away some inside information. Oh, that was a bad pass right there and could have easily been picked off by Josh Lay, the that, senior corner. That was great coverage that time. Josh Lay anticipated the slant. The receiver went out and really Pittsburgh and Paul Rhodes, their defensive coordinator, thinks that his corners can handle the Nebraska receivers, and he was right on that one. The receiver broke out two steps and tried to come in on the slant, and Lay beat him to the spot. That was great coverage by Josh Lay. And now it is Jordan Congdon, their freshman with a 20 Six yarder, one of nine freshmen who has seen action for the Cornhuskers this season. Hooking, hooking. No good. They miss a short one and they stay scoreless. So Hongdon, who was five of five coming into this game, just missed for the first time. 
like good defensive back play. Watch Josh Lay on France Hardy. Goes outside, man-to-man, -man, punches it with one hand, looks for the ball. He makes a good play, but it could have been a great play if he catches the ball. Now, from behind to Kirkley, and here's your first down. All right, look for Paco. He's going to throw it on first down. Pump fake. Going to go left deep, and Grixby did not let the wide man, Derek Kinder, who's starting for the first time. He's out of the Buffalo, New York area, and uh, Grixby, Grixby had him wrapped up. One of the things that Pittsburgh feels they can do is throw the ball deep against the corners. What happened on that one? That ball was underthrown, and if you talk to Matt Cavanaugh, he says the pass that Tyler Pelko struggles with the most is the deep ball. And Dave Wanstead wanted interference, and when I saw that replay, I'm not too sure that he's not right. Once the ball's in the air, you've got to get off it. Grixby was on him, and that's what Dave was complaining about down there. Second down quarterback draw. Paco isn't going to go any place because Jay Moore, number 44, is on top of it. Here's your Aflac trivia question. We know that Bill Callahan, we, we mentioned it earlier, he took the Oakland Raiders to a Super Bowl. Now, how many Super Bowl head coaches have returned to the college ranks throughout the years? Can you think of any others besides Callahan? Took the NFL team to the Super Bowl, then came back, as uh, Bill did at the start of last season, took the job here in uh, Nebraska. It is third down and 14. Pittsburgh continues to struggle. They haven't done much on uh, third down. They are 0 for 3. This is their fourth third down of the game. Hit from behind and sack. Ball comes freeze down. Crystal was right there on top of it as Wally Muhammad coming in as the pass rushing defensive end has created havoc here today. That's the third sack for Tyler Palco in this football game and you can see that nickel package is giving trouble. The nickel package defensive ends is that's Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator. He's telling Tyler, you don't have a lot of time. Throw on rhythm, move up in the pocket. Let's see if the Huskers pour in on Grassley here. They've got him backed up in his end zone. Dropping back, they're going to play field position on this punt. Grixby, the corner, will field it at the 48, crosses midfield, looks alley, got it right side across the 40. And down to the 38-yard line and out of bounds. And, uh, John, have the uh, Buckeyes uh, jump back in on San Diego State. All right, John, we'll keep an eye on that one. In South Bend, the unbeaten Irish, they beat this Pittsburgh team, and they beat them up pretty good in the second quarter. Ross not going anywhere because number 54, Charles Saleh, gets it done. And uh, let's uh, take a closer look here at our quarterback, Zach Taylor. My favorite movie is Zoolander because I'm a big Ben Stiller fan. It's the music that gets me fired up before the game. I just tend to listen to any country music. My favorite pro sports team is the Indianapolis Colts because I've been a huge Peyton Manning fan ever since I was in the sixth grade. Well, Zach Taylor went to Wake Forest for a couple of years before he moved to the Butler Junior College in El Dorado, Kansas. Threw for 29 touchdowns a year ago. Here he is trying to get one here. And caught at the five-yard line. A beautiful catch by Terrence Nunn, who caught four passes a week ago. This for 36 yards, a well-thrown ball. Comes down, post route, inside man goes across, post route to the outside, and right there lays on the play, but does not make it. Thinks he has it all the way, but Green, good, excuse me, Terrence Nunn goes up and makes that catch, and he got it up with his hands again. Reached up and grabbed it, didn't catch it in his stomach. Good throw by Zach Taylor. There were several Texans on this Cornhusker roster. Corey Ross is the eye back down here, close to the end zone. See what Callahan wants to do. In the red zone. Ross is hit right there before he get across the line of scrimmage at number 44. Brian Bennett, a man from New Jersey who has impressed the coaches in some practices, makes the play for Dave Wanstead's team. Pittsburgh really has five almost interchangeable linebackers. They feel great about them. Bennett, Blades, Thomas, Clint Session, and J.J. Horn. And you saw Brent Bennett, who didn't start the game, come in and make that play. They ran right at Bennett, and nobody blocked him on that play. Well, now they've sent a fullback out there. Dane Todd offset to the left, and they'll run back. Ross cuts off of it, just in the end zone. 
Scratching and clawing close to the one yard line. That'll bring up third down for the Huskers. That was a great read by Ross that time. That is the stretch play that you expect your tailbacks to make. Get it speed to the outside, let your offensive linemen push those guys by and cut behind to make positive yards. Now Todd switches over to the right side of the formation. They'll run behind the fullback. Ross not going to get it. This is going to bring up a fourth down. Wow, wow, Decision wow. time for Callahan as again HB blades this time defensively. That is that is the tough thing to take if you're a, a, a Nebraska fan watching this offensive line not be able to knock anyone off the ball. And I'm not talking about for it. anyone is in a great rush defense. Pittsburgh has been try, having trouble stopping the run for a couple of years. This is going to give Pittsburgh a huge, huge lift if they can hold here. Nebraska missed a field goal on its last possession. Now they come back with fourth down. Here's Taylor rolling, cutting, touchdown Nebraska. Zach Taylor rolling to the right. Sees daylight and cuts to the left for the first touchdown on this Saturday. Really had no choice. Great read by Zach Taylor because Pittsburgh did an excellent job of picking up everyone. Fullback Dane Todd was the number one player to throw to. He was covered, and Taylor took the only option he could, the third option, and got into the end zone. Congdon on to attempt the extra point. Cook the holder. He's the punter. Snap from Lane Kelly was perfect. So the uh, junior walk on put it right on the money. It's now 7 0. And watch the quarterback again, just as Gary described it. Morris cut far to the left. Daylight touchdown. The afternoon's first touchdown as we take a look at our Nissan Drive summer. And Nebraska struggled as the quarterback keeps it himself on that fourth down. They only had to go 39 yards. Remember, they forced Pittsburgh to punt. Had good field possession. And they hit a 36-yard pass on that play. So that was the quarterback, Zach Taylor, having a very good series on that touchdown. Out of bounds, and this will be a penalty. So I guess the kicker in our Pacific Life game summary, the black shirts have come in with three sacks of Palco in this game. Muhammad, number 55, has wreaked havoc. And Gary mentioned the pass, and there it was to Grixby. And then on fourth down, he scrambles in, and the Huskers lead it 7-0. Yeah, it, it wasn't uh, Nebraska knocking anybody off the ball. And on fourth down, they resorted to a little bit of trickery. And Zach Taylor has been making very good decisions, but he's had a little better pass protection than Tyler Palco. I think that Pittsburgh needs to move Tyler Palco out of the pocket a little bit. They don't need to make him a sitting target like that. A little bootlegs, a little rollouts. Well, that's what Wanstead said he wanted to do when he talked to us last night. We haven't seen much of that so far. First down and 10. Straight handoff to the freshman. And the youngster, Stevens Howling, comes up the middle before McKeon makes a stop. At one time, remember, Stevens Howling was moving this pit attack, and then they went back to the pass, and the uh, black shirts teed off on Palco again. So you can see his numbers extremely impressive here. As, uh, as again, they are shorthanded. Rashad Jennings back home with an injured yeah. shoulder did not even make the trip. Pitt has 73 total yards, and, and Stevens Howling has 49 of them. Second down. Slip that time, and it'll be third down. Well, earlier we asked you the athletic question who besides Bill Callahan, if anybody, has come back uh, to the college ranks since taking the team to the Super Bowl. Folks, there are four George Allen, Bobby Ross, Forrest Gregg, Bill Walsh. Callahan is the, uh, is the fifth one, the one we've talked about. The only one, however, who ever won the Super Bowl was Bill Walsh, and he did it three times. And he beat Forrest Gregg three in his first marks. Super Bowl uh, championship, 26-21, in Detroit. That, of course, is up in Pontiac, and Detroit will be the site of the Super Bowl game next year. Third down. Palco trying to roll, and the Huskers won't let him. He's down for the fourth time. 
And Carricker, number 90, who also is having a big day defensively, brings him down at the 27-yard line. That's Adam Carricker's second sack of the game. Wally Muhammad does too. But to run one of these bootleg pay plays on a passing situation is a little bit questionable because you know those front guys are looking but nothing but the quarterback. Carricker just didn't even go for the fake. He went right for the quarterback and it was too hard to handle. Adam Grassil and the Black Shirts are suddenly taking charge of this game. Cornhuskers up by seven. They're in on Grassil, but he gets it off. Grixby back at the 29-yard line. Slips the first gunner to the 42-yard line. There's a flag down on the play. Back by the punter, however. It is back down at the 22-yard line, and uh, they'll sort it out. You could see it. So it is against, uh, against the Panthers. On the holding call, one of the areas where Callahan and Nebraska have improved dramatically this year, the punt return game. They averaged uh, just a little over three yards of a punt return a year ago. And uh, you can see that the Grixby has been uh, doing a little bit better than that here today. The ball is uh, at the 43-yard line. And the, uh, the offense is out on the field. Pretty good field position. Why risk it? Your offense moved the ball last time. Why make a mistake and have something go wrong? Looks like Bill Callahan's going to take it right there. Five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter in a low scoring game here in Lincoln. And the Huskers up by seven. Hardy is out to his left. Two tight ends have been the norm all game right there. to the 46-yard uh, line for Ross. College football on ABC is brought to you by Nice. Come see at least one game. Everybody should see one game in Lincoln. Some of the nicest fans in the world. Ross on that drop play. He's got the first down and then some. He is out of bounds at the 40-yard line as they move into Pittsburgh territory again with that 14-yard run. So it is not the flashy passing game, but it is more that solid running go deep occasionally passing game that uh, Nebraska is featuring here today. Here's the freshman offensive tackle, Murtha, right there. He was going to play in this game. Watch the job he does. Number 76 comes in the game. He is getting rotations at both tackle spots, and he did the job on that one. Highly thought out player, Murtha. Out of Hutchinson, Minnesota. He was the number one tackle prospect in the country, and he's been slowed by injuries. Got him. Party. He's run into it. That'll draw a flag. No question. Well, I don't see. There it is. The hat came first on that well, sideline as the defensive back, uh, the, Josh Lay, uh, ran right into it. The linesman that time had already thrown his flag earlier in the play, so he didn't have anything else to throw but his hat. This ball again was lately late thrown by Zach Taylor, but you can see it. Ball is thrown slightly behind, nothing to do but lay but to push him. And when you only have one flag, you throw it early, and That's then you throw your hat late. Yeah, pretty easy. So we got uh, lots of things here for them uh, for them to sort out. That play was so wide open. Zach Taylor is going to kick himself for not throwing that ball earlier and putting it out where only his guy Hardy could get it. And it's an illegal formation by the Huskers. And they're going to offset. Yep. So a break for Pittsburgh. The linesman saves him 15 it. yards. And uh, the linesman, once he threw his hat, as Gary told you, he already made the, uh, <laughs> the call. And uh, so the, uh, the offense of Callahan remains a work in progress. Absolutely. As Nebraska shoots itself in the foot. Well, the schematics are there, but the execution and rhythm is not. Ross is behind Taylor. Picks his way and another penalty to the 30 yard line. Got a first down, but again, there's a penalty flag that is thrown on the Pittsburgh side. Chris McKillop just turned around to the referee and said, Holding. Good call. Offense. He was right. It'll be a 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. 
Chris McGillip lined up at left defensive end. That's right exactly where the play was run. He turned around right after the play and looked and saw the flag coming right at him. It's just so odd to watch Nebraska play this way, isn't it, Brent? I mean, they used to be such a machine on offense. Yes, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it just seems they... I, I, in fact, Gary, I don't think I've ever seen them struggle inside the five-yard line. I, they I, always are coming here and the pressure with the quarterback rolling out I, right or left. And maybe bang, maybe they need that crown in the middle of the field to start running them. <laughs> Get back downhill. First down at 19. There's the play fake by Taylor. Gives him plenty of time. Going to throw back across field for Hardy. No, incomplete. And uh, he was open. That was a tough throw. Mike Phillips was the safety. And uh, boy, when right. he moves outside that hash very, on the right side and throws dangerous. back to the left, that is a tough collegiate very throw dangerous. right there. Both linesmen on both sides of the field threw their flag that time. You wonder if it's another illegal formation or was somebody lined up offsides. Yep. Wow, that, is, that just gets to be embarrassing when you can't line up right Illegal time after time. Offense, the penalties decline, second down. That's third or three or four times they've lined up wrong for a penalty. All right, next Saturday, uh, regional doubleheader. See either Iowa, Ohio State, or Colorado, Miami. Then Notre Dame, Washington, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. So uh, that's our that's our doubleheader look uh, next week. Here's second down and long. And uh, Nebraska getting 5.4, but many of them on that on that one pass play uh, to Grixby. And uh, Taylor going to throw it again, juggled and incomplete. I'm sure they'll wave this one off. Probably should have been caught over there. Just, Thomas jumped on it defensively on that far side. No difference makers out there at all. No one in the specialist wide receiver tight end running back quarterback that really scares you if you're Paul Rhodes and running that defense for Pittsburgh they just look out there and say let's just run our defense we don't worry about anybody we think it could match up all across this field There's Paul. and 19 Taylor has good time middle slant incomplete and very very well played. Beat him to the spot, didn't he? Like he knew the play. And then got himself uh, injured in the process. I believe that's Phillips. He did a good job on the play, and now he has injured a leg as he goes down. Let's uh, let's check it out because he was the defender over there. He was, and he was going for the football. So if there was a collision, if there was anything with the receiver in him, he has every right to go to that football just like the receiver. We'll take a break and we'll sort it out and we'll take a second look when uh, we come back. Definitely, folks, this does not look good for uh, Mike Phillips. We'll show you the replay, the, uh, the ankle uh, uh, twisted awkwardly on this play. It does not look good. Here's Nate Swift right here. He's the guy that's going to run the route. He doesn't run a great route, and you'll see Phillips kind of close in on the play as he comes into the picture. Here's the receiver kind of goes like this and what he needed to do is come and come across very square on the play and that allowed Phillips to close in on the receiver he's going for the ball and then his ankle his right ankle just gets bent sideways Phillips a um, sophomore out of Warren Ohio he played at Warren Harding High School and uh, an awful lot of good football players through the years have come out of Warren Harding uh, certainly we've seen many of them with the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes and we wish Phillips the best he's a, he's an outstanding safety uh, for Pittsburgh and this is going to be a major loss for him. Yeah, he was a starter last year as a corner in this uh, football game against Nebraska and that gives him more guys that can cover back there. So Dave wants that will adjust defensively we'll take another break. Uh, the air cast on it uh, it seemed rather obvious that, that could be a broken ankle. We looked at it. Obviously, we don't want to speculate on an injury, but uh, the crowd here in um, Lincoln giving him a big ovation uh, as he left the field. The Nebraska medical staff was out there to uh, to help out, and uh, we are back now and ready to go with a fourth down. And uh, Nebraska will be will be punting. Sam Cook back to punt it. Right, let's go. Let's go. Fielded. By Revis, and he slips the Gunners and out of bounds. And a penalty flag down at the 23 yard line, far side. 
Well, Rivas got ice water because those Nebraska gunners were all over him. He had dropped the one previous, but he was looking to make a play on that. And uh, what usually happens in this situation when the guy gets out of a uh, sink and running the ball is uh, one of your own return blockers makes the wrong type of block. Blocking the bag, number 28, the 10-yard penalty, first and 10. So coming up now, just inside of four minutes. Okay. Well, let's see if uh, Matt Cavanaugh can figure a way to get his best player, the most important player on Pittsburgh, Tyler Palco, some time to throw the football. Straight handoff with the freshman, breaks into daylight, 35. To the 43-yard line and uh, tracked down by Bullocks. Safety Daniel Bullish. That's 30 more yards for the freshman. Mike McGlenn does a great job right here. Offensive tackle coming out. The ball is run strong side. He comes out and switches off. Gets that shot, shot on Bo Rude, and that's what broke the play. He goes out, and then Big McGlenn turns back and gets Rude right at the time to spring it. The kind of power running game that Wanstead wants to play. Absolutely. To the Pitt Panthers. First down and 10. The crowd saw that one coming. <laughs> they sure did. You could sense it from the crowd down below. You could hear the buzz as the seconds began to tick off. And another uh, mistake. It was one of those plays. Offense. Ball start, number 75. It's a five yard penalty. It remains first. It was one of those plays where Tyler Palco had two plays at the line of scrimmage and never got it out. And uh, how about our feature guy from uh, Jack in the opening, huh? Averaging almost uh, 10 yards. 79 yards here. But Pittsburgh being shut out. Sliding catch short of the first down, but across midfield on uh, the receiver. Lee doing a good job here for the Panthers on this play. You can see when Tyler Palco gets back, throws the ball with timing, his offensive line can handle it on first and second down. It's on third down passing situations that are tough, and ooh, that ball was close to hitting the ground on that play. There is instant replay, but that uh, would be very difficult to find anything conclusive on that. Second down. They're going to look They're at gonna it. They're going to take a look. They though. are going to take a look. So we will go back. That's the buzzer going off down below. The instant replay wants to look at it. Again, called completed. Has to be irrefutable. Visual evidence. Square in or out. When he turned over, you couldn't see anything on that one at all. The umpire and the line judge both looked at each other and agreed, looked at each other and said he caught the ball on the field. See the ball, the ball is on the ground right there. This is gonna be very interesting. And I, I, you know, in the NFL, they would not call this completed. They would say that the ground helped him with the catch. Well, you look down on this uh, sellout crowd in Lincoln, Nebraska, and the views are being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship with Lumen Onion. Captain Tom Witten is at the controls up there. He was with us uh, last Saturday night at Columbus, Ohio, high above Memorial Stadium here. The Cornhuskers lead it 7 nothing over Pittsburgh. The Panthers in Lincoln for the first time since the 50s. It's kind of fun guessing this, to tell you the truth. It really is. If, if, if I was the replay guy, what would I do? I'd say, After review, not enough. It's determined the play pass was incomplete. It hit the ground. Yeah. The ground, you could see that ball just move in his hands, and that's what the referee, saw, the upstairs referee saw. Look, Gary and the replay official disagreeing here, folks, for the first time today. Gary would not have turned that over. But the man with the TiVo and the uh, communication equipment, again, it's far different than the NFL. 
Second down coming up for the uh, for the Panthers after that incompletion. They've had 17 running plays and seven pass plays. Stevens Howling has been their offense here today. They just corrected it. 80 yards already. Now they'll have to go get corrected the clock and move the clock back on the incomplete pass. Protection holds this time. Fires incomplete. And Grixby had coverage on Lee. The ball took just long enough for Grigsby to get back on that play. Lee was open, ball kind of hung, stayed in the air, and Grigsby was able to get up there and whack that thing down. Win oh, five. Yeah, win third down. So far, it has not been good for Pitt. Del Sardo is the receiver to the right. Green, the converted running back, has him in this third down. Alco check first, wants to set the screen. And it is blown up by the black shirts. Pittsburgh will have to punt. Corey McKeon, the Mike linebacker, the man in the middle, who had such a huge week against Wake Forest, comes up with a big play. Barry Cryer, number 94 that time, inside tackle, nickel specialist rush guy, I think deflected this ball. Comes in, he's got a stunt, gets his hand up on the screen. Let's see if he does, just tips the ball and then reacts back and gets it. Wrestle. Fielded inside the 10 yard line. None daylight, 35-40. Can they block the punter? He gets a piece and slows him up, and he's out of bounds. None back for his first return, breaks free. But credit Russell with saving a touchdown. He held his ground, got a hand on him, slowed him up. Otherwise, none would have marched in for the touchdown. Watch how he catches his ball above his head. Both gunners have a shot for him. One miss, two miss, and then punt coverage has no chance to make a play, and none has only one guy to beat. Grassle does a good job of buying time, buying time, forcing him to make a cut, and that allows for the tackle. 62 yards on the return. I'm not sure that they had a 62-yarder all of last season. The defense is Nebraska's best unit, no question. Special teams may be second. Offense, work in progress. Taylor sacked back at the 44-yard line by McKillop. Chris McKillop, now his uh, younger brother Scott is a backup linebacker here. And they had an older brother who was a heavyweight wrestler at Slippery Rock. So this is a football playing family out of Pennsylvania, the McKillops. That play took so long to develop and get open that time that uh, Zach Taylor really had no one to throw the ball to. He looked and looked and looked, and by the time somebody broke open, he was already, McKillops had him eaten up. Inside of two minutes, there's one of the battling McKillops. Let's take a look at what happened on this play right here. You see this guy's going to come out here, here, and out. Whoops. Comes out, ground. This guy comes in and in, and it takes forever on the play. One, oh, slow, slow, slow. Real late, Blake. By the time he gets open on the play, it's too late for the sack. Well, the Huskers were hoping to get a second score before the uh, intermission. Panthers are hoping to hold them right there. But 145 to go. Nebraska has one timeout left, and Pittsburgh has two. And uh, Taylor over there getting the play jack from uh, Coach Callahan. And Brent, you would think as quarterback at Nebraska, you'd be the big star in your family, but not for Zach Taylor. He admits that he deflects the conversation to his siblings, his sister Quincy. Uh, Jack, I, I think we've got the <laughs> wrong video up there of uh, Stevens Howling. The youngster who has done such a great job here for Pittsburgh and uh, as a uh, senior in high school he rushed for nearly 2,000 yards and 32 touchdowns he has uh, he has been the uh, key and, uh, and we apologize for that but Stevens Howling deserves uh, extra credit too for the performance we'll get back to Jack with that story right after this play second down.
for uh, Zach Taylor. He's got a lot of time. Can't find a receiver. Going to be sacked on the other side of the 50 yard line by Phil Tillman, the senior defensive lineman. Okay, uh, Jack, uh, just pick up that story. Well, let's tell you a little bit about Zach's siblings as you take a look at the family photo. His sister, Quincy, tearing up the soccer fields with her play. His little brother, Press, the quarterback of Norman High in Norman, Oklahoma. But it's his sister, Catherine, right there in the middle of the family picture he's most proud of. Catherine is an award-winning Special Olympian swimmer. Yeah, that's uh, such a nice story. The father, Sherwood, there, he played at Oklahoma. He's a defensive back. He later coached the defensive backs at Kansas State. And that inside draw play with Ross crosses the 40-yard uh, the line here. We've Really a tough play for Pittsburgh that time. They didn't have enough players on the field. Still got the stop. Well, it, it is just the mistakes that Nebraska is making. The plays are taking forever to develop in the passing game and keeping Pittsburgh in this football game with no offense at all for Pittsburgh. Hunting unit is on the field here with uh, 34 seconds to go. Uh, they would have a long way if they tried to uh, fake it at 19 yards if you're wondering where that first down marker is. Revis, who bolted past the Gunners the last time. I think the Gunners thought he was going to make the fair catch, but he never did. He's standing back at the 10-yard line with uh, now Nebraska running down as many seconds as they can here. They'll back, uh, they'll back hook up an extra five yards, and he'll try to drop it inside the 20-yard uh, line. 11 seconds when the, uh, when the play clock runs out. So they'll take the delay a game, run the game clock down to 11 seconds left here in the half, and uh, bring it on back. So the uh, walking on Lane Kelly again is he just got his scholarship here, folks. It's his third season as a long snapper, and you can watch him. He'll he put it right there. Cook is ready. Coming out of Creighton prep, beautiful snap right in his hands. Hangs it high, going on into the end zone. They're not going to let Rivas attempt to come back. It'll come out here with four seconds left uh, on the clock. So the Nebraska defense pitching a, a shutout, and that Nebraska defense in two games, folks, has allowed only 10 points, and they've scored 24 themselves. 16 sacks coming in to this game and Gary how many do they have in four. this game they have four, four sacks that's 20 well. sacks in less than three games <laughs> and, my friend. and that was a area of concern they they have players up front now that they believe in they got good matchups against the pit offensive line but uh, Pitt's still in this football game I mean not playing at all no offense at all except for the freshman who has 79 out of the total 88 yards well John and the gang will be along to tell you about the Louisville comeback and uh, that was good against Oregon State. We'll hear about Michigan exploding, how the Buckeyes are doing. That's all coming up here at the half on ABC. Morning, Huskers. This one from Zach Taylor set up the game's only touchdown. It might have been worse, but watch the punter hold up none after a 62-yard return here. And help arrives, and this drive stalls out. So right now it is 7-0, but none uh, doing what he can. And uh, Gary, what's your feeling? Let's let's start with the Pittsburgh uh, offense because since that opening drive or so, they've really stalled out, except for the freshman running back. Yeah, the, the problem for them has been they really don't feel confident throwing the football in the pocket, and that's what Tyler Palco does best, throwing the pocket. So when you're calling plays, you're really at a disadvantage. They just can't handle the front four. Yeah, Gary, let's take a look at the possessions yeah. for the Panthers, and uh, this will tell you the story. 85 of Pitt's 87 yards came on the first two drives of this game. That blocked field goal was a big play. It sure was, and, and you know, Pitt had it going with their young running back a lot, yeah, as you said, but they haven't been able to build off that. No play action passes, no bootlegs, no neck, nothing really they can hang their hat on. And, and you're making the point that Nebraska's passing attack, they're kind of slow oh, getting seemed, into the yeah, It's taken forever to get guys across the field, real long plays, play action plays, and it's really bothered Taylor, who's having throwing the ball pretty accurately, getting time to throw the routes. Adam Grassel will kick it off here for the Panthers as uh, Nebraska will receive to start the second half and to go to the onside kick and Rivas picks it up at the uh, 49 yard line to start the second half 
So Dave Wanstead and the Panthers come up with a big wrinkle to start the second half, the onside kick. And uh, I thought it was going to be Grassel. It was uh, not as you could see. And uh, man, Revis pounces on that football. Yeah. And what a big, big decision here by Wanstead and the Panthers. They give a huge lift here, Gary. Brandon Mason, number 27, the young running back, did a great job of knocking the Nebraska player, blocking him out of the way on the play. Big heads up, big play by Mason on that one. Now, can the Panthers move after the successful onside kick? come back with the uh, veteran running back for nine yards and uh, so that was uh, Raymond Kirkley Jack what the coaches have to say well no surprise coach wants said get back to the basics we got to tackle on defense we got to get chunks on offense but I found it interesting when I talked to coach Callahan asked him what he thought he said I preached to all my players to play the second half smart and he said Jack one of the things we need to try and do early when we get our first possession go for the big play on first down we'll have to wait and see yeah, and uh, they were not smart on the uh, on the kickoff to start the second half coach won't be happy about that second down and short and the veteran with a hole on the right side blown up and he crosses the 25 to the 23 yard line before Blake Tiki makes the stop that is a 20 yard run for Kirkley I tell you you get this ball and you block at the line of scrimmage right there Kirkley the bigger the experience leading rush from a year ago gets in there and gashes Nebraska I, I think the Nebraska defense wasn't ready to come out here I agree with you they, they just don't it have their even focus. Look like the coaching staff absolutely was ready on what to call they might still be eating hot dogs that's thinking it, yeah. that they, oh, Kevin, <laughs> get that staff together right. upstairs first down and 10 coming with the fullback they were ready for that nothing doing as they come to the fullback character is there our Pacific life game summary shows you some of the numbers uh, not too brilliant on third down there Gary for either side and that was a key to the football game I thought for the offenses to be able to make points remember the 95th and 99th rated offenses in the country and you could see how they struggle on third down 0 for 6 and 1 for 7 second down 10 yards needed for the Panthers formation Murphy the fullback from the pocket steps up and hit from behind ball on the ground and the 25 incomplete pass character again coming around the corner one of the three great defensive end rushers for Nebraska Adam character has had his way to the outside this play again Pelko had to pump the ball one too many times and that's too long for character let's see if this ball came loose before he threw it well, that's a free hand right there. Well, they're liable to stop it. Yes. He did not come forward with that ball. They're able to look at it. They haven't stopped it yet. So the replay official agrees with the call on the field. Third yeah, down. There it, and there it is. There it is. And you know what? The audible might have allowed the replay official to communicate. Palco stepped away because nobody was making any movement down there like the uh, the beeper had gone off. You know, the NFL guys are so used on these close plays to get up there and snap the ball. Pittsburgh on this play wasn't ready. Well, that ball is out before he throws the ball, in my opinion. Let's see if I go one for one or 0 for 2. Pittsburgh right now is dialing New England. They want the wording on the tuck rule. <laughs> Car <laughs> Carriker wraps that ball up and you can see as, as his arm comes forward, there's no football in the hand. Ball is down at the 25-yard line. And again, uh, you know, it is up to the replay official. All these plays are being reviewed. Fans sometimes yep. Uh, yep. think that, oh, how come they didn't review it? They are reviewing the entire game. Now, this one, they're stopping play. They want to take a closer look and make absolutely certain that it was an incomplete pass. And, uh, of course, if there's indisputable visual evidence, the ball will go to Callahan and Nebraska so this could be a huge turning point in this seven nothing game right now is Wanstead and the uh, Panther you can see Dave over there stalking eight he knows he's at risk on this one that this three, one is very very close the three defensive ends for Nebraska have been tipping it in this defensive favor. here we go Gary play play stands is what he hit stands is called so an incomplete pass. Palco coming back out now on third down. Well, we'll have 
to get a clarification on that one, won't we? Because that one looked like he had the ball knocked out of his hand. Tom Brady would be glad to talk to us on the phone. Third down, of course, Callahan he didn't was the go. victim exactly. of that tuck rule in that snow game in New England. Here he gets, doesn't get the ball. Uh, down on the 25 yard line, so we'll watch that unfold after the game. Third down now, Palco on an option look, and he puts it into Kirkley's hands, and the black shirts were there. Shanley, number eight, up to defend one of the backup safeties. Nebraska that time looked as if they were going to blitz. This was an audible call by Palco to go to the option, and Shanley, who was in the middle of the field, number eight, just tracks it from the middle and makes the tackle as the free safety. Good defense. Josh Cummings cuts out of the field. He's had one block. This is a 38-yarder. Grasso will put it down. The block pressure came from the right side of the defense last time. Pittsburgh's on the board after the onside kick. They march down. They survive an instant replay scare. And Cummings kicks a field goal. Expect uh, a closer game, or did you think the uh, Cornhuskers were going to blow Pittsburgh out? It's a, a four point game right now at the bottom of the hour. 7 3. Gary Danielson and Jack Arrude. I'm Brett Musburger. And uh, remember the last time that the Panthers kicked it off. It was an onside kick. The ball is uh, on the tee for Adam Gressel. You better believe that the, uh, the front five for Nebraska, ready in case they try, very unlikely, is that they go back to back. Here's the uh, kickoff. This is going to be fielded at the five. And uh, an alley for Green to the 20 yard line. Ball was down. The linesman right there. On the call in uh, college football, and although after they finish this new scoreboard, that's a work in progress. Uh, it's close. Maybe that will be the tallest in the city <laughs> of Lincoln. As I look out there, and uh, by next season they will have that uh, that replay board. We'll get a chance to show that to you. Sam Bryant has replaced Phillips at safety. Unfortunately, the word uh, from the side of Mike Phillips did break an ankle. It is confirmed. And Horn breaking out to the 40-yard line, 20 yards for the eye back. The 5 6 senior eye back. And he's had 10 career 100 yard games uh, coming into this, and that is number 11. He's now at 103. Brett, you haven't called HB Blades much in this game, and this time Todd, Dane, Dane Todd, number 41, fits him up, running the ball right up the middle against the middle linebacker, and is getting blocked by the middle, by the fullback for this uh, West Coast offense. Ross stays in. Too wide out to uh, Zach Taylor's right hand side. See, Ross is ready to go again. They blocked that front to the 41 yard line. The offensive line under fire here in, uh, in Lincoln, trying to come up with a better performance. And uh, the Cornhuskers, this was their uh, drive chart. They had a missed field goal before the touchdown but you know they had uh, so much better field position and didn't take advantage well, well, that's one thing that pops up right away that last one when they got the ball on the 30 but the other thing that pops up Brent only had the ball five times in the first half mm -hmm. that's very unusual in a college game you usually get it seven or eight times there is own 45 out basically playing with half the field he's got the man to man half. to the outside on both corners good corner right uh, point out Taylor Steps away from traffic, going to take it off, short of the first down. Tripped up at the 45-yard line. There's one of the battling McKillops. Chris has been active. And that's been Dave Wanstead's strategy with this defense. McKillops was a safety when he came, a fullback, a linebacker, and now he's a defensive end. There is the, uh, the new construction outside here on the north end, and uh, the new scoreboard being erected. And there it is. Uh, talk about a replay screen. And, uh, Gary will have to will have to stay here see if they can get three pictures up there for us. Uh, they get more than that. <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna be some impressive board. I think the board alone is about five million dollars. And the pass short of the first down, very, very well uh, defended uh Rebus. That's that what, sophomore corner. Good that's job. what really drives you crazy if you want to watch a lot of West Coast offense. Those plays, those short catch plays that used to turn up and make first downs, now the guys come up and make the tackle and you look very foolish throwing those plays. 
Speaking of Sunday, uh, down the road, number 25 will be playing for somebody in the uh, in the NFL. He was uh, he was outstanding as a freshman. Walt Harris recruited him. Harris, of course, now the coach at Stanford. And Cook is back to punt. He's done a good job, but this one's going to go. No, they've got to it. Short of the goal line. It is down at the one yard line. Just an outstanding job that time by Brandon Rigoni. Young Brandon Rigoni. It's down there. Well, well, Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, trying to hold the fort. We had him mic at practice. Coming up now, the practice sounds with the defensive coordinator. How are you doing, Coach? Doing good, guys. Ready to have a good one today. Yep. Right, Sloss? Slossenberger. Huh? Slossenberger. On the field for the Panthers, the freshman running back in the I formation from just inside. A one-yard line battling uh, to get a little field position. Now, uh, Kevin Cosgrove, he calls plays uh, like this, folks. Listen to the practice sounds. Give me 22 personnel. 22 personnel. Give me a pair formation. Joker up. Give me Joker up. Joker up. You twos, pay attention now. Give me a under Mars. Under Mars. Mars, Mars, Mars. We good to go on that? Nothing changes for you guys. <laughs> they come. I don't know if it's under Mars, Joker. I don't know what Kevin wants. It takes wants you two it. years to speak to Nebraska. <laughs> Good coach talk, though, Kevin. We like that. There's your power eye, and here comes the freshman dancing and slamming over there with Stuart Bradley, the Sam linebacker, and Adams, the defensive tackle. So Bradley slams into him, and uh, Muhammad is out there barking away at this defense. The uh, Black Shirts with a 7 3 lead right now. They have not given up a touchdown. In a feeling here that Dave wants that, but just like to get some space to be able to Look punt that. that ball because Tyler Palco started off hot, but has done nothing since. That was to Greg Lee, that 21 yarder. And uh, they can't get back to their start. Third down and seven. Got one Changing one up with here. that crowd. One on one. Grixby has got him on that side. He'll throw deep middle. Complete. As he hits Eric Gill, the tight end, he had Lee drawing coverage on that side, 26 yards down the middle for a first down. Big play by Palco. Here's the safety that he's reading. At the snap, the safety goes out wide. So what happens is he just goes to the tight end and right down the middle hits the play. Safety goes wide. Watch the safety drip. There's the tight end down the middle. Make the catch. Beautiful read by Palco. And Gary, that's their first third down conversion of this game and it was big first down at 10 ball out to the uh, Panthers 30 here comes the uh, freshman trying to stretch the D and somehow he slips that first tackle wow, that very, was impressive. very well that was impressive because the middle of that you know, line was blown up that time but Howling got outside Stevens Howling's got outside and made another guy miss Tony Dorsett came out of Pittsburgh and uh, I watched him in his first game against Northwestern and I had forgotten that Dave Wanstead was a senior on that Pittsburgh team and uh, Dorsett made a made a huge impact. He just led the Panthers all over the Wildcats and you see if you see a freshman running back like Stevens Howling in a Pittsburgh uniform and your thoughts immediately jumped to the great oh, Dorsett oh. at that time your thoughts jumped to the black shirts character was in there again along with Bradley a uh, character number 90 is having some game on the edge here sure for the is. Oscars. that was a nice stunt that time by the defense for Nebraska they lined up and then at the snap they moved and that blocking assignment was not able to hand up you see character nobody touches him until he gets right in the face of the freshman third down for Pittsburgh but they only need three so they can run or pass they show power eye here He's going to throw, but there was a whistle just prior to the snap. The line judge on this near side, he's been very busy. Now, Wanstead's out there uh, barking a little bit at the 35 yard line. Prior to the snap, false start, number 45. Five yard penalty, and it remains third down. Very Gill, he's not happy with his tight end. In well, fact, he's very unhappy. Yeah, he moved. He cut that big pass on third down for him, though, just a while before. But self-inflicted wounds drive coaches crazy, especially when it's third and short. Now you're back to third and long. Given the assistance in the airport. 
Third down. Nebraska shows Shanley Blitz. Short drop slant. Short of the first down. And this is uh, going to be fourth and very short, I believe, depending on the mark right here. And uh, now Wanstead over there on that sideline. This is very tough territory. If they don't make it, he's got to make the call here. They're, they will measure first. I thought, and the yellow line indicated that they were just short, but it is close. Now he's talking upstairs. Kevin on the rest of the offensive coaching staff to see. Uh, you know, you're an underdog in this situation. You put a field goal up on the board. But I, I know in his gut he wants to go. Uh, sometimes that's not the best decision to make. But Palco certainly ought to be able to stretch for that. Get in behind Joe Villani, the transfer from Bucknell, who is the uh, who is the center. Let's see, everybody's looking down there to see. The way Nebraska's offense is going, you got to punt this ball, don't you? Here comes Grassel. He's really <laughs> unhappy about that penalty. Gill he is, is going to jump all over the off with Glenn. He's uh, they, he must have thought it was Mike McGlenn that moved on the play. Russell back to punt. Beauty. Booms of beauty. None. Going to let this one go, and it'll be down inside the five-yard line on the three-yard line. Cox down to down it right there. Tough, tough field position. Dave wants the defensive line coach originally. <laughs> Cox, uh, hope it's not a hamstring, and uh, he's the one who downed that ball inside the five, receiving attention on the sideline. I'll tell you, uh, Dave wants that was upset, but 94 yards of field position exchange on the punts is not bad. Exactly. Coming out now from the five yard line. Draw play with Ross and the Pittsburgh easy, defense easy, 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 easy. eats it up. Thomas, one of the uh, defenders there, along with Blades. And a reminder that uh, invasion is coming. Something is happening to this family that will change their lives in ways they never imagined. It's not what you think. Invasion begins Wednesday night at 10 9 Central. And the TV guide uh, saying invasion uh, could be the best new drama of this season. So that's worth watching Wednesday on ABC. Second down at 11, 7 3. Nebraska with the football in the lead, the shadow of their own goalposts here. Taylor going to throw out of the end zone. Got to get out of there. He just does. Got it back to the three yard line, and the uh, crowd breathes a collective sigh of release. Uh, Thomas Smith was closing in. Yeah, I, I thought uh, Thomas Smith, he's going to say, I had two points in my grasp, and the quarterback sh shook me away. Inside, right there, there he is, Thomas Smith. Let's see if he has a shot for two points on the play. He throws away the lineman, comes in, got him right in, good grasp, and oh, lets him get away. That's a two pointer. You know, we haven't mentioned Matt Harrion, who's unable to play, he was injured last year in the Missouri game. And the one thing that you need in this style offense is a tight end who can get open in that seam down the middle. Uh, that, that has been a problem. Uh, Harry and still unable to play broke his leg from the end zone fire complete but you see it just short of the first down but it did give them a little breathing room as Mark LaFleur makes the catch for the Huskers. That's another one of those West Coast offense throws that if you don't throw it accurately you don't pick it up the first down. You completed it but if that would have been up a little higher for LaFleur to catch the ball and run with it you have a chance to do it. That's what you know the Steve Young's and the Joe Montana's were so good at running now, the offense. Uh, Cook had a 76 yard punt against Wake Forest. The Huskers and their fans would love to see one of those right now. He'll be punting out of his own end zone. Lashes it. Revis on a retreat and here it goes. He's done it again. What a punt. Picked up now by Revis. Fumble recovers it at the nine <laughs> yard line. A little schoolyard play. But I want to tell you the punter Sam Cook just put an 84 yarder up there. And that probably I'm holding up because that's a good punters here. He had the third longest with the 76 yarder. And uh, we'll get confirmation that well could be the longest punt in Nebraska history. That was something, folks. I don't know if I've ever seen three straight punts with the three offenses starting their plays inside the 10-yard line. Three straight times, three punts, yeah. and the offense starts inside the 10. The second longest. I'll bet Kyle Larson was that his name who was here. George Hill, our super stats man, will check the record book. 
the second longest in Nebraska history. Palco on first down. Gonna go deep. Wants the lead. Battle Grixby's got it. Lee at the 40. Trying to pull away from Grixby. And they will wrestle him down at the 17-yard line. And an unbelievable play here by Pittsburgh coming out after the 84-yard punt. They get 73 right back. Big punt, big punt, big punt, big pass. Let's look at the Chrysler passing playbook right here. It's just a takeoff. Throw the ball deep. You see Bullock's inside the safety. No help outside. Ball is thrown nice and high. Receiver Lee has a chance to adjust for the ball. And then he doesn't see from the left side. The other defensive back comes in to make the play. Tiki coming from that other side came hard. Now the freshman. He batters across the 15-yard line. Well, Popko has had some beautiful long passes. Hadn't been consistent, Gary, but a couple of beauties. Well, Tyler's happy we waited on this passing chart until he threw that last pass. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he has struggled a little bit. He started off quickly, but you can see we waited just long enough to get this one right here to change a day that was a little bit of a struggle into something that he says, all right, we got a chance to put some points on the board. Downfield, he's been good. 26, 32. How about him getting those yards back after that cooked punt? Now second down. And they come back with the veteran running back. And he pounds it inside the 10. So Kirkley trying to pick it up. And here comes third down for the uh, Panthers. And on third down today, they're only one of nine. And that, uh, as you mentioned before, that pit, that Nebraska defense has been very stingy inside the 20. They need another stop because their offense is just producing nothing. Here's your third down. And Wanstead will have to make a decision with 240 if they don't pick it up. Third down and three. Bukas brought the play in. Kirkley didn't get it. Black shirts hold again. Fourth down. Jay Moore makes the stop. What does Dave want to do here? Field goal? He sends him on the field. He'll send Josh Cummings out. Try to make this a one-point game. Upset again with you the think, offense bogging down. You think anything that had to do with that, the last time Tyler Pelko had a play like that, he threw an interception for a touchdown in overtime that Dave Wanstead was very conservative on that call. Cummings' first field goal of the game was blocked. So this will be his third attempt. Got it across. 27 yarder to make it a one point game. So Josh Cummings on the year is five of six. And he's made it a one. Remember, he put that game against Ohio into overtime and then they lost it on the interception. 144 to go in the third. What coaches usually stress is the results you usually get. When I talked to Matt Cavanaugh earlier this week, he said, I've been really working with Tyler Pelko on his deep throws to throw the ball up higher so the receiver had a chance to adjust for it and make the play. You can see how well he did it. Coach O'Brien, and uh, we look down at these aerial shots courtesy of our friends at the Outback Steakhouse. Proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl down in Tampa. The Bloomin' Onion one up there. Uh, they cover sporting events all, all across the country. So here before another sellout crowd in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Cornhuskers are clinging, clinging to a one-point lead. They just cannot get Bill Callahan's West Coast offense on track. And uh, they are struggling mightily here today. Both teams have only converted one-third down in the game. One for Nebraska and one for Pittsburgh. Grassle. Deep leg. And here comes Green coming out. Trying to make something happen. Out to the 25 yard line. And in the half here. Zach Taylor and the Stay tuned for the Thrifty Carbonell post game report. John Craig and Aaron highlights and analysis of, of all the games. This is a this is a big big uh, week uh, tonight Florida and uh, Tennessee who do you like in that one Carter I've been riding Florida on all my uh, interviews <laughs> we do a lot of it and so I might as well stick with Florida uh, here uh, Nebraska 
I, let, let me tell you what I'd do if I was Bill Callen. I'd go back to that short passing game on early downs. Quick, get it in out of the hands, hit the running backs in the flats, tight ends in the flats. Don't take so much time throwing the ball. Right back with Ross. I think they lined up improperly again. There's a flag thrown on the far side of the field. So and you could see the Nebraska coaches were very upset when the flag came down, and they, they, they have to assume it was on Nebraska. Illegal formation, offense. Boy, Five yard penalty, remains first down. You would not expect this from a high school team after three games, to be frank. Yeah, and, and over a year in the system. Correct. Now, uh, our star watch uh, is uh, we focus in on number four, Corey Ross, on our IBM star watch. And uh, number four rushed for 19 times, 103 yards, averaging 5.4. Taylor hit on the release, too, incomplete. Too much time, took too long. No rhythm in the passing game. Slade was in on him. Slade, I should say. The Pittsburgh defensive line now is feeling more and more confident as they feel that uh, when they rush the passer, they have a chance to get to Zach Taylor. He's got a second down, 15 if you know ball from the 21 yard line. Rhodes defense. This two tight end offense has given nothing to Nebraska the whole game. They've got nothing out of it. Four rushmen. Threw high badly that time as he uh, tried to get it uh, outside. Clayton receivers, and it will be uh, third down for Nebraska. Gotten just no stretch with the two tight ends in the game and Pittsburgh's corners are so confident covering the wide receivers that the linebackers are being for Pitt are being able to jump on all those underneath routes. Josh Lay senior corner. Ian Revis and without Mike Phillips remember broke his ankle in the uh, in the first half. Sam Bryant has filled in for him here and uh, Nebraska has been unable to do anything about it third down Taylor middle high short for first down and they'll have to incomplete their way that off yeah, and, there, uh, there so they will be uh, they will be forced but HB blades delivers the blow and uh, you know for the, one of the few times since I've ever come in here I hear a little smattering of booze about the uh, about the offense right down I I can't remember hearing that well, uh, I, you know maybe it's happened before I just haven't done the games but I I don't remember that. They, have, they led the nation in rushing, what, 10 years straight years or 20 years in a row or something? They're not used to watching this either. And uh, players shaking up on a play down at the 20-yard uh, line. And Revis has been replaced by uh, Joe Del Sardo as the return man. I think the situation here is that the coach wants that, wants to make sure he catches the ball. He's not pleased with some of Revis's decision-making as the, as the punt returner, and he took him off. And remember, Cook's last punt was that 84 yarder. Wonder if they'll go for the block also on this type of play without Revis in the game if they don't try to get one block themselves. Well, they Tried to get it. in. They went for it. Del Sardo going to let this one bounce and it'll die at the 20. Seven yard line. Well, we've talked a lot about Dave Wanstead, who was uh, the coach for midway through last year of the Miami Dolphins. Of course, he played at Pitt, went down to uh, Oklahoma State, then out to USC this is an assistant, worked under Jimmy Johnson, and then went to the Dallas Cowboys, and they won a Super Bowl, then up as head coach of the Chicago Bears after that, and down to the uh, Miami Dolphins, and now uh, back to his alma mater as head coach. He told us last night if it had not been his alma mater back to his home area, he would not have taken uh, the job. But uh, he said he was delighted to be back and the ninth former Pitt player to become a head coach. Johnny Majors, his old coach, is here watching on the sideline. First down and 10. Stevens howling and not much doing this time. Only, uh, only a yard. Tiki is there. Tiki uh, deserves a lot of credit on that long pass play to Lee because I'm not so sure that if he had not been coming hard from uh, the left side or the far side of the field that they would have been able to stop him from going on into the end. Yeah, he was a surprise starter for this team. He won the job. A former walk on just won that starting job. Now Grixby. 
Off of Lee a little bit on the right side. Paco looking back under pressure and uh, basically they had to throw that one away. He was trying to get back out to the uh, the right side. Smith was in on top of him. Uh, Derek Kinder in his first start was the uh, wideout that time and not Lee. Third down to 10. And here comes in that nickel rush team for Nebraska. They bring in Barry Turner, number 99. And they bring in Wally Muhammad, number 55. And they sink Adam Carricker, number 90, a lot of times into tackle. This time they're just using a three man line. And Muhammad, one of the three, number 55. Deep set for Paco. Going to swing over in that area on the rush. And they will be forced to punt. Could not get the first down. And again, Tiki, number 25, is in there defensively. Playing a uh, fine game as the free safety for the black shirts. And, uh, uh, Pittsburgh offense tries to get something going, but uh, they wind up having to settle for two field goals. Still, all in all, they're right in it as we head for the money quarter. Pestle to punt it for Pitt, and let's see if Nebraska tries to get heat on him. Tiki backs off. None back deep to return. They set a return. Line drive, punt, and it goes out of bounds down inside the, uh, right at the 10 yard line. And uh, so, Gary, uh, you know, all in all, for what we've said about the, uh, the offense of Pittsburgh, they're uh, right there. You know, you got to give Wanstead a lot of credit for that onside kick to start the second he, half. He is playing the game, understanding it's going to be low scoring. Right. He's gaining confidence in his defense. And, you know, I've been there as a quarterback in games where nothing is working. You can't handle the pass rush. Your receivers can't handle their corners. There's not a lot of plays you can choose from. Both teams are really struggling to find a play to really latch on to right now. This, this formation, though, just has really slowed Nebraska down, in my opinion. None switches over to the uh, left side here. Uh, here comes the little fella. Now at the first down marker, Corey Ross and Sam Bryant, the safety, and there is a penalty flag, so hang on again. We've got a uh, penalty flag thrown. It looks like it's going downfield, too. It I think it's on Fr uh, France Hardy, number seven wide receiver on that play. And I don't know if they they tried to, I, I don't know if they called it blocking below the waist. No. Holding. Number seven off in. Well, it be a 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Yeah I knew they called it on him. I couldn't figure out what but he was out there and he blocked his man. There was no doubt. Number seven to the outside, one-on-one -on -one coverage, option play, takes a while, he throws, and let's see if he reaches up and grabs the guy. Just by the foot. Yeah, I well, mean, just a count? little bit, just that a count? little. Get him by the foot? Yep. <laughs> no need to do that, and uh, put you back. Well, that is the uh, sixth penalty against the Huskers for 36 yards. Or so. Draw play. Pittsburgh does a uh, does a terrific job. That's uh, Salette does it. Let's check in with John. Championship Brent. Yeah, John, he's an outstanding player. Some it's overlooked because of Vince Young's awards in Texas. There's a penalty on this play, and Taylor is sacked by HB Blades inside the five-yard line on this second down. And uh, the umpire just winged it. Flag right in there. One-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside. Couldn't win. Taylor had to pull it down. Offense, number 85. The penalties declined, third down. This is where he wanted to throw the ball to the outside. Look at the great coverage. Josh Lay is right on him. Taylor needs to know in that situation on a quick throw, you got to throw it anyway and avoid the sack. Zach Taylor on a long third down play. He passed for 10 yards here in the, uh, in the second half. Constant shifting and not doing much with it. And uh, yeah, that's that's a big at the risk. Nine yard line. Uh, big risk for that. They put it into uh, Phillips's hands, and the crowd uh, growing even more and more restless. Yeah, they had an illegal formation again. Two two men uh, covered up each other. 
illegal formation for sure. He'll go to fourth down. Downfield, number 85. He'll want the ball. Number 85 was covered up, which made him ineligible. One tight end covered up the other tight end on that last shift, did not back off into the backfield, and when when the other tight end goes out, he's ineligible. Well, we get word from George Hill that Mike Stiggy, uh, back in 1992 against Oklahoma State, punted one 87 yards. That's the longest. Now, Cook has had an 84-yarder. He did pass Kyle Larson, who had an 80-yarder against Texas. So they need another one here. And off the side of the foot. This is going to give Pittsburgh a very short field. Lonston wants it marked up here at about the 35. Now Dave is marching it off. He's down to the 32. He's just, he just he continues walking. And now he's into it with a field judge. Field judge has marked it at the 40. Look at oh, Lonston, what? are you kidding me? Dave's, that ball was out of bounds. Dave's arguing with the wrong guy. He was the, <laughs> back, the, the referee that made the call. The referee points <laughs> at the fellow on the sideline as to where he wants Still it. Still good field position, though. <laughs> He's got his football team in this game. And he's got the crowd almost on his side. Now they come out with the, uh, the freshman. Stevens howling. He's Palco's back. They give him Campbell as a blocking back. Gonna try the youngster. Stretches the D. Tries to get the corner. Good gain on first down. This is going to put him in second and uh, short before Green can uh, make the play over there. It's been that unbalanced line that Pittsburgh has had a lot of success with running to the wide side of the field. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Kevin Cosgro, defensive quarterback coordinator for Nebraska, starts blitzing from the field to try to stop that. So Stevens Howling well on his way to a 100-yard game against Pittsburgh's defense. Would get it here. Stop short. And then keeps on twisting for the first down. Hard to bring down the first time you hit him. I'm very impressed. He's 5'7. He does not go down easily. The first man has been unable to bring uh, to bring him down much today. And of course, again, if you weren't with us at the top of the day, Rashad Jennings injured his shoulder and uh, did not make the trip, so he didn't start. Kirkley started at running back, but uh, Coach Wanstead told us last night that Stevens Howling was going to get a big look, that uh, he brought some speed. And uh, he's had it. That's right at 100 yards for him now. They give him three yards on that. So he's right at 100. He gives some back. He's under 100 again. And, uh, John, what about uh, Miami and that dogfight with Clemson, my friend? He put that ball in his fullback's hands. That's the old Miami attack down there. Now it's second down for Pittsburgh and Long. Now goes straight back, fires left side, incomplete. A little miscommunication there with uh, Derek Kinder. Let's check in with Jack. Well, Brent, earlier this week, I had a chance to visit with Tyler Palco, and I asked him to name the most significant game of his career. He didn't talk about some of the victories. He talked about this game one year ago, where in the first half, he threw three picks. He said, Jack, I was too, I was too uptight. I was pressing. I forgot the most important thing about football, and that was that I can't win it on my shoulders just to go out and play ball. Right now, he's relying on his running back and his leadership to try and bring this Pittsburgh Panther team back to take a lead. With the wind at their back, just a few yards would set up Josh Cummings to put Pittsburgh on top here. Let's see what they come up with on third and 13. Through behind the running back, who or should say the wide receiver, who never, never looked back. A little miscommunication. And, and, he, and he missed the read because it was a corner blitz, and Greg Lee did not see it. If he'd have turned around and caught the ball, he would have had at least eight yards and maybe make somebody miss and score. Corner blitz, Tyler Pelko read it perfectly. Greg Lee did not. Now here comes Josh Cummings. Pittsburgh trailing by a point, 7 6. He's kicked two field goals. He had his first attempt blocked. This is a 49 yarder, but the wind is at his back, folks. He's got a little breeze down there. On its way. No good. Nebraska holds on. 7-6. Cummings now 2 of 4.
blitzes are designed to fool the quarterback. There's the corner blitz coming at Tyler Palco. Here's the guy that has to cover Greg Lee. He should have stopped right there and caught the ball. Watch what happens. Palco reads the blitz, throws the ball to the spot. Greg Lee is the one who's fooled. The guy runs right by him, and he doesn't see him. HB Blades and the Panther defense get ready here. Ross is stopped. You know, we talked to HB about playing middle linebacker at Pittsburgh. Is what he said. Tough, smart, um, aggressive player. You know, uh, you have to be, yeah, you have to take no prisoners. You know, anybody that comes into your zone, into your area, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a receiver just running a route. You know, you have to knock him off, knock him on his ass. So there you have it, uh, son of Benny Blades, a one-time Miami Hurricane star, went on to the National Football League. He's the man at middle linebacker here. And uh, the Cornhuskers are having a terrible time trying to move the ball as Thomas is there. So yeah, back-to-back -back plays by Thomas. Great job. Our Pacific Life game summary. Now, the Nebraska defense has been just outstanding. Four sacks in this game. Haven't given up a touchdown. And Taylor diving in for the game's only touchdown. And Palco with some long passes, but... Uh, the Panthers can't get into the end zone. They've settled for two field goals, and that's uh, that's the difference. Now on third down, Taylor going to take off. He's got the first down. Tough run to the 45-yard line. That's an impressive run by Zach Taylor. And, of course, the crowd here loves it when a quarterback takes off for a tough run. Shades of Eric Crouch, Tommy Frazier, and the rest of that game. Well, that's uh, now for the game. Now, Pittsburgh and Nebraska combined. Three for 24. Nebraska just made their second third down conversion of the game. Pittsburgh has only made one the whole game, and that's why it's seven to six. Now they're starting to move the ball across midfield, and uh, Gary, I know you asked Bill Callahan, what's he looking for in this West Coast offense, and here's what he said. We look for consistency of performance and communication. Once our players begin to communicate what they see, and what's at the line of scrimmage. And once we have everybody on the same page, the consistency of what we're doing uh, is going to show up. And they have not been consistent here today. They've made uh, innumerable mistakes. And as a result, it's a one-point game. Pittsburgh with a, with a chance here. And uh, Ross stepping for the first down. He's got it. So it'll be first down for the Huskers who are trying to finish it off. And again, your fellow Thomas in on that play. Yeah, he's been a, a force in his football game. It seems like Nebraska has really circled Blades number 51. But Brian Bennett and Darren Thomas, the other two linebackers, have really had their way in this football game, along with McKillop, number 41, to the outside. First down and 10. And Taylor on the draw play to the 40-yard uh, line. And, uh, you know, Gary, you also asked quarterback Zach Taylor, what does Callahan stress to you as the quarterback? Making good decisions. You know, I think as long as you're effective and you don't turn the ball over and you keep your, your team out of uh, minus yardage plays, you know, you're going to have a chance to win, especially with the defense we've got and, you know, the great running back and offensive line that we have. And you, uh, you take a, a look. When, uh, they have not turned the ball over here, so it is uh, second down for Zach. Neither side in the whole football game, and it's 7 6. And now uh, Taylor uh, changing up as the uh, play clock one on down one to right three. There. He slips. Oh. Whistle. Obviously tangled up with a foot. There was a penalty flag on the play as, uh, as Taylor was uh, pulling out. Penalty flag on the play. Prior to the snap. False start, mm. number 65 offense. It'll be a five yard penalty, remains second down. There's the Nebraska possession chart. For the last seven possessions, you can see, they punted six times <laughs> and uh, only once, uh, the 28 yards in it. And, well, then, uh, and then they punted. How about the top one? Six plays for eight yards. And second down and long now for Taylor. They like the matchup up with Lay up at the top of the screen. Penalty flag thrown again. And I, I wonder if they're going to get an illegal. Intended receiver. 
And the, uh, the line judge. Yeah, they're, they're going to get hands on the receiver that time. Like a pick play, I believe. Offensive pass interference. Yep. Number 83. Pick play. Repeat second down. That's and Terrence Nunn on the pick. And a uh, reminder, Thursday, you know, Thursday night the Connecticut Sun pulled out a dramatic OT win. Tie the Sacramento Monarchs. One game, a point game. And Nebraska's offense is in reverse. They're on the other side of the 40-yard line. And uh, they have eight penalties for 51 yards. They now have a second and 28. The shuttle pass on the inside. to get a few of those yards back. And, uh, and uh, how about Oklahoma and UCLA out west? Uh, John, what's happening? Good one there. And uh, here it is an offensive struggle. A one-point game, only 13 points scored. 7-6, Nebraska leading Pittsburgh. Third down. Taylor under blitz pressure gets hit on the release. And the defensive back got interference because the ball was underthrown. Had the well, ball been thrown properly? I don't know about that one. I, I thought that they, he was trying to intercept well, the ball. That may be true, but the reason why he got it was the receiver slowed up to try and reach back for the ball. You may be right. Let's take a look. The ball was very poorly underthrown, and I thought he'd get a chance to intercept this ball. Blades gets Taylor right in the chest. If anything, I thought it was offensive interference on the play. Pass interference, defense, number wow. 25. Wow. Oh. Cut off, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first Dave down. Wanstead Dave Wanstead is, is out on the field, and their field judge getting him back. And that was third down on that play also. Automatic first down of the 15-yard penalty. Well, I, I just didn't see it that way at all. Well, I thought it was just pure luck because the ball was underthrown. But into I, the wind. Take a look at this. I, I honestly thought he was on him. He look just at him trying to catch it. the ball. Well, I just thought he was catching the ball, and it was the offensive guy who had him wrapped up. Personally, I didn't see that as offense at all. No. Defensive interference. Again, you may be right, but the reason why <laughs> it happened is the ball was underthrown. Right. So we're making, we're trying to make different points here. First down and ten, and uh, stumbling is Brandon Jackson as he comes across. Huge call in the game if Nebraska can make points out of it, though. It's 15 car rental post game. Reporter be coming your way with John and the gang. Time permitting, of course. Now, Daryl Rivas has to get his head on again. He's still playing corner. He's still looking at the officials behind him. He has to now concentrate on the next play. Second down. Toss play. And Rivas makes and the play. Rivas comes. And there's a penalty fly. The line judge has got another penalty fly. They may be back in Nebraska up again here. Let's see. That was a great play by Daryl Rivas that time. Gets called on the interference, puts his hat back on, and makes a great play as a corner. The college football at ABC is brought to you by Pontiac. Go online. Look down on the uh, campus here in Lincoln. Corn Huskers back on down, the Pittsburgh 45 yard line. Second down and 18. Threw it away. And uh, Corey Ross was uh, indicating that he was being uh, held up there on the play, so it will be uh, third down. Nice play by Charles Sillette that time. Number 54, defensive end. Good pass rusher, but read the screen right away and just had Ross wrapped up and nothing for Taylor to do. Let's see if they're looking for another yeah, pass interference. Pass interference. Oh, no. They're and down at 18. Pittsburgh's been doing all man-to-man -man coverage on long yards. Let's see if they just set in a zone this time. Pittsburgh said they were not concerned about these wide receivers. They were right. Throwing deep. Non incomplete. No contact down there this time, obviously. They that ball was thrown long on that time. Taylor got it down there. And now Cook will trot onto the field to punt again for Nebraska. That was a great stop by the Pittsburgh defense. Revis put his hat back on, made a good play, holding on the play. Nebraska continues to make mistakes. And Pittsburgh feels better and better about their chances of winning this game. And again, the, the wide receiver, Joe Del Sardo. Dave Wanstead has inserted him back there. 
instead of Revis. And to cook an outstanding punter. Desardo lets it go. And it'll be down inside the five yard line. So Pittsburgh having trouble with its punt return team here. Jay Moore downfield. And what a leg Cook has. At the five yard line. 541 left here in the fourth quarter. They trail it by a point. The freshman going nowhere as number 13, Corey McKeon, the middle linebacker, brings him down. Tyler Palco now is just hoping that they can get out for one first down. Get out where he has an opportunity to throw the football around and get it in field goal range to get a chance to win this game. It's quarterback time now. Five minutes to go. One good drive, and you can steal a win. Second and nine. Stevens Howling, the running back. Play fake to him. Popko from the end zone. Incomplete third down and ten. Well, both offenses have been struggling in this football game. Give the defense some credit, but I think the real story of this football game is right down here. Neither team is good enough to win on third down. When it gets time to make a play, neither team can do it with these offenses. Wanstead and Pittsburgh ready. Third down and nine for the Panthers. Four down for the black shirts. Paco chased out of the end zone, has to stop, fired downfield, incomplete, and Pittsburgh forced to punt inside of five minutes. That time, Barry Turner, number 99, the true freshman, recruited out of Tennessee. Coaches said he's going to be a superstar before he leaves Nebraska. An Erasmus James type pass rusher is what Kevin Cosgrove told me. Terrence Nunn back on the field. At the very least, even a fair catch, they should have excellent field position. Adam Gressel coming out of his own end zone. Beautiful view right behind that punter. Turn 40. Down he goes at the 37 yard line. So again, Nebraska working with excellent field position. Malley down to defend it. And Nebraska hoping to finish him off here if they can, but they haven't shown much offense. So at the bottom of the hour with uh, Gary Danielson and Jack Root, I'm Brett Musburger. Nice to have you along here from Lincoln, Nebraska. The Cornhuskers are 2-0. The Panthers are 0-2. But the Nebraska offense, regardless of what happens here, that offense is still very much a work in progress in Lincoln. Even if they win it, they're not going to be too satisfied by this performance. Ross Jitterbugs to the 35-yard line. There'll be some more uneasy folks here around Lincoln about the uh, the future yeah, and of they, this team. Uh, they've had a very favorable schedule. When you look at their schedule, you would give them a shot to run unbeaten all the way to Oklahoma on the 29th, but uh, not the way they played offense today. Yeah, not with this offense. Not yet. No difference maker for this Nebraska offense. Not one guy you really have to stop. Nice to the uh, 32. Blades did a nice job standing that one up. Ian Morris. You know, Brent, not even an offensive lineman that really is an NFL caliber run behind me type offensive lineman. Everybody's out there just guys. We welcome those of you who watched uh, Ohio State and San Diego State. 27 6, the uh, Buckeyes in command after giving up that shocking opening touchdown in that game here on a defensive struggle with neither offense doing much the Huskers with a first down across the 30 yard line lead it by one seven six now we were talking about the Nebraska schedule there's their two wins Iowa State in here and that figures to be a tough game then Texas Tech 
Texas Tech hit him with 70 points last year. And they go to Baylor in Missouri. And we have circled October 29th, Oklahoma. But, uh, Gary, as you point out, they're going to need more offense against Iowa State, Texas Tech. Missouri to uh, to win those games no matter where they're playing. Yeah, and, and they know that. I, I mean, you're right, and uh, boy, it's going to be one of those things where the defense starts looking over to the offensive field. Four. Another sportsman life. We'll step off 15 yards, and it's still first and 10. I did not see that at the end of the play. He must have thrown the ball down or said something after the play because that was a first down and then stepped off after. That's just losing your poise in a one point game. When you're when you're driving down for a big touchdown like that. Ross has been around long enough to know better than that. Gets hit, spins forward, makes the first down. And does the points to, I don't know, for a first time, if that's the call on sports like that's that's stretching it in my mind again. First down and 10. Taylor. Draw play. Ross will not point this time. I will guarantee it. Well, he didn't make a first down. I was that's a little bit too much for me. That's a kind of flamboyant behavior that they just don't want to see at the college game. Time out. Just inside of three minutes. And there's the total yards by quarter. 252, Nebraska 255, Pittsburgh. The difference, Pittsburgh's had one field goal block, missed a second one. And Husker's up by a point, and there Ross bangs for the first down. 2.50 to go. And uh, a reminder now that tonight on ABC Saturday Movie of the Week, Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, guard, and a good one. Yeah, he's first year starter coming off a knee injury. Right. A junior limps back off, and, and that's he had a, a great troubling block. sign. Great block on the play to spring him, but when he unloaded, a lot of pressure was on that left knee because he, he is the one that sprung that play for the first down. And he said, I know my knee is never going to be the same again. Dave but he's Kennedy. playing anyway. Dave Kennedy, the strength coach we worked with him. We saw a shot of him over there on the sideline. Five seconds on that play clock. Ross eating up time to the 23-yard uh, line. And uh, Gary, let's go back to that uh, previous play. Yeah, let's play. see. If you're going to block this well with a bad knee, we're going to show it again. Watch him come inside here. Left guard, power O. This is old-time Nebraska football. Power O, block, block. Cash it. Good job inside by Dane Todd, number 41 also. That's, that's, uh, I hate to say it, that's, that's old time football. That isn't West Coast football. Ross with 151 yards here today. He's averaged uh, five yards a carry. Inside the 25 yard line. He'll come again and uh, Ross has been the, uh, has been the workhorse. There's Blades, Benny Blades' his son. Making the stop from Plantation, Florida. To make our final break of the game. 1.40 to go, 7-6 Nebraska. Harrison Beck there, big time quarterback prospect, a consensus number 10 in the country out of Clearwater, Florida. Uh, he committed very early to Nebraska. Jay Norville has spent time in Florida going over the offense. They have not redshirted him. They wanted to take a look at how the offense was moving. They have said he would get a solid shot. And as they approach Big 12 play, you wonder. If the freshman from Clearwater, Florida, Harrison Beck, might not get a chance to see what he can do against an offense that has only one touchdown. Now, you hate to blame this all on Zach Taylor. That would certainly not be fair. Gary has pointed out they do not have breakout receivers on this team or anything like that. But sometimes just a rhythm change can do things. It might be very hard for a freshman uh, to step in there, but he's a very ballyhooed prospect. They also have a running back. And his name is Lucky. We haven't seen much of him so far. He is a freshman from North Hollywood, California. He was a top five running back prospect, number 20. Now, we have seen uh, their fullback of the future, Cody Glenn, is number 34. There is your backfield of the future. And if this offense continues to struggle, uh, you've got to take a look at the young blood right there. There's the fullback, and there's the eye back. 
There's the young quarterback. You got to get the young bucks out there and play them all around the country. We see freshmen making impact and uh, this this offense just won't get it done even in the Big 12 North which has been down here the last couple of years. This is a very favorable schedule for this team. Uh, they could make a run. So now we've got uh, fourth down. I'll let you thank everybody along with me here uh, Gary the executive producer of ABC's Mike Pearl senior producer Bob Thompson the coordinating producer and the producer of today's game Bob Goodrich nice job and directed by Steve Bime the old Trojan himself down there TD is Randy Hargrove associate producer Willow Tool, associate director Brian Fay and our production assistants Dan Barr Julie Norman uh, Affleck and St. Mary as we like to call them. production manager Kevin Winling technical manager Mark Towie Stage manager Eric Conti does an outstanding job. The computer stats Craig Rothberg, boost at George Hill, spotter Scott Musburger may keep him around. Scoreboard operator Jason Polsty, the move man, took a day off for EA Sports. So here we are. Here is a 38 yard field goal attempt for Nebraska, leading it by one, seven six. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No good. A one point game instead of a four one twenty eight. How huge is that Pittsburgh though has exhausted its timeouts. So Pauco is going to have to run this drill Gary but he has a chance. He has a chance and he only needs a field goal started out in the middle. Remember he kicked it against the wind and when it starts to turn it turns very quickly. Pauco now needs three points. Greg Lee is the go to receiver folks. He's eighty six. Kinder would be the other wide. Del Sardo but 86 is the man he's matched against Green three man rush for Nebraska on the first down they go to the prevent throws in underneath short of the first down puts it in Kinder's hands Wrigley was at the bottom pretty surprised by the three man rush I got to say they only need a field goal and it's downed win. Got a lot of time against that three man rush. Almost uh, gave it up again as he slipped it into Stevens Howley, the five foot seven inch freshman who's had a big breakout day. Down to 98 yards though, rushing after he gave those yards back. All right, Kevin Costco is going to get second guess by a lot of people if they put field goal on the board. First and 10 against the prevent. Rush of three. Pauco going to take it off. Remember, they're out of timeouts. He does not get the first down to stop the clock. They're going to have to hurry now. Clock is ticking. No timeouts. No first down. Yard shy. Paco checks that sideline. Thirty-eight seconds. No good. Incomplete pass stops the clock. And Bullocks defending the wide receiver. We welcome those of you in Columbus been watching the Buckeyes win 127 6 with Gary Danielson and Jack Arrud. I'm Brett Musburger. Nebraska hanging on for dear life. Pittsburgh with the ball, 34 seconds to go. Out of timeouts, third and one for Tyler Paco and the Panthers. Paco with time incomplete, broken up at midfield as Daniel Bullocks. The other one of the twins with Josh Bullocks playing for the New Orleans Saints. Daniel Bullocks, who stole the ball last week against Wake Forest and dashed in for a touchdown, makes this fourth and one for Pittsburgh. Ball needs to be thrown to the outside. You can see the corners to the outside. They're falling off on anything. The opening on the play on the prevent is in the middle of the field. Got to have at least a first down here, Gary. It's only a yard. To go. Need a yard. Pop goes a decent runner. They jam the middle. He's got the first down, though. He stops that clock, and now they've got to move quickly. And they can get up and just spike the ball. Now, downs are not a problem. Get up and spike the ball. Well, they got two calls in the huddle. First down at 10. Wanstead's team is ready to go. From the gun. Wind is at the back. Sideline is just not there. Sidelines are not there. That's where all of the Nebraska defenders are. You got to throw the ball down the middle and you have to throw it at least first down plays. 17 seconds to go. Josh Cummings is Dave Wanstead's kicker. Got to get a crossing route about 18 yards. Down about the 40 35 yard line is the target area. 
Green, the converted running back, has a lead. Matched up down at the bottom of your screen, you can see right there is the safety is also ball. keeping an eye over there. Paco has to check Lee. Slips away from pressure. Here Fires deep. Got it, Del Sardo. That'll stop the clock inside the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh's giving themselves a chance. Nine seconds on the clock. Now Paco will stop it after the 26-yard gain. They will send Cummings in. Easy. Stops the clock right there with seven seconds to go. Cummings is two for four. Had his first one blocked. That's the t area that you throw against to prevent. With three-man rush, you just be right up into the pocket. You can't cover the middle of the field like that with linebackers. And if you complete one 15-yarder, you're in field goal range. Now, if it was a seven-point game, there it is right there. That's where you need to run the ball, right in the middle of the field. When you're right up into the pocket, that gives you time to come to the inside, and there's that opening to throw the ball right on the X in the field. Josh Cummings hit a 49-yarder against Notre Dame. This one is 47 with the wind at his back. Grassle the punter. Nebraska will use one of it. Try to freeze him up here a little bit. Grassle the punter over there to talk to him. And uh, Josh Cummings was three of three coming into the game, two of four here today. And uh, Gary, you think that the prevent was a huge mistake no, on there, Nebraska's there, part. No doubt. You've, they, they have not been able to block the defensive ends and the pass rush all game. You don't need to rush five or six. But a four-man rush with uh, Wally Muhammad and Barry Turner was the strategy. Now, Brent, if it was a seven-point game and they needed a touchdown, I would buy into it. But not a field goal. You only got to get the ball to the 35-yard line. Well, today's Chevrolet players of the game, and uh, there were candidates galore defensively. There's Daryl Rivas, the young sophomore corner for Pittsburgh. Adam Carricker, one of the defensive ends that... Uh, Gary was referring to the edge rushers who did such a good job and now it has come down to the kickers Josh Cummings Mark Estemeyer is the snapper for Pittsburgh the punter Adam Grassel will put it down and Cummings will attempt to send Pittsburgh Time on number two. winner and number two <laughs> gets used here now you would think if you're Nebraska do you keep one time out in case you have one play left Probably not enough time to make any difference, does it? But they block. Missed that 49-yarder, 38 and 27. He has made the only points on the board. And this one is a 47-yarder that he'll get a chance to kick. And it was number 99, Barry Turner, that blocked it last time. They will push from the right side again and then jump and leap on the play. He'll Callahan is calling those timeouts from the sideline. Standing right next to the official. Josh is out of New Hill, California. He uh, came to Pittsburgh from JC, the College of the Canyons, out in California. He helped that team to an 11-1 record. They went to the semifinals of a very tough Southern California JC League. Here's a chance to send Pittsburgh home with a W. An upset win in Lincoln, Nebraska. With seven seconds left on the clock. Here comes the 47-yarder. Grassel will put it down. High snap. Throws it. Nebraska survives. A bad snap. It went right to Cummings. And Wanstead says, hold on, that's a first down. No, it wasn't. He gets another down. It was only second, second down. down. He has another opportunity, another play. There's still one second to go. So it was a planned play. No, no, I you don't think, think so. No, no. It was such a the, high snap. The center snapped it when the, I don't think the holder was ready for it. He was looking back at the field goal kicker, and the ball was snapped before he put his hand out. He never saw the ball. Exactly. And a perfect play by the, the kick, not to run it here. Cummings. Just throw it Cummings by coming. Save the moment. Absolutely. By throwing the ball. Now you wonder, <laughs> can they go up on the clock? Was, huh? One second left. <laughs> One second left. Now, th this was all chance. This Nobody a, thought of it. This is a goofy game of what? Now, I wonder if you can review whether the ball play actually took more than seven seconds. Watch it. There you can see Grassley. He's not even looking. And the ball is snapped. Hits him in the helmet, I think, right as it goes. Wham. Yes, it does. And happens to but bounce to him. It's not the holder's fault. No, no, he absolutely not. He is to hold his hands and say go. The snapper 
fired it before he was supposed here, to. Now the coaches. Right, but for here's Nebraska another thing, Brad. The well, the Nebraska coaches are arguing that nobody went out for a pass, and it should have been intentional grounding. Okay, because if you see anybody go out for a pass for Pittsburgh, there's nobody out there. He throws it. Why is that not intentional grounding? And he wasn't outside. Yeah, not outside the box. And I'm telling you, Nebraska still may get this ball. One second for coming. You better believe that Estemeyer will pay attention this time. Well, the now watch Russell as he gets ready. 46 yarder. Nebraska will win it. Finally, Callahan smiles. Wanstead's kicking game comes up two of five. The special teams, the kicking game, the difference. Cummings has two blocked. And Nebraska wins it. It wasn't pretty, but they'll take it. Yeah, it was they'll downright ugly. I think it was Adam Ickles, number 49, that came around the corner. Or was it Mark LaFour? I think it was Ickles, 49, that got his hand on that right through the middle of that place again. A comedy of errors. Jackaroo, take it away. Well, Coach, first of all, congratulations. But tell me what went through your mind when you saw a second opportunity for a field goal by Pittsburgh. Well, I knew it was an early down. They had another chance. I thought they were going to call a, uh, an intentional grounding out there. But we practice this every day, Jack, full speed, hard and live every day. I'm really proud of our kids and the effort that they gave in those two attempts. Let's talk about your offense, though. Where Let's do not. you have to go? <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> we got a long ways to go. I really felt that in the four-minute drill here where we are trying to stall the ball, uh, they did an excellent job. We just didn't convert on that last series. But we got a long ways to go yet. Well, you know, congratulations. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it. That's an understatement. One last look at the second blocked field goal. And Cornhusker fans are saying thank goodness for the defense and the kicking team. Once again, our final score, 7-6. Nebraska now 3-0. ABC Sports Online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Carmelo Post Game Report after this from our ABC station. So long, everybody.